Hello everyone, my name is Matt, aka Legion Rex, and welcome to a star-studded episode of The Gap. I'm your host. With me today, I have my co-host, Shane, aka The Bearded One. How are you doing today, Shane, on this fine morning? I'm doing great because, remember kids, if you woke up thinking today was going to be a poopy, smelly, bad day, just remember that we do live in the definitive timeline because Spyro for PS4 is now real oh boy that was that was a great reveal yesterday i was so happy Mm -hmm. (laughs) i'm so happy i watched that trailer like seven times we all did we all did um Um, i didn't play spyro as a kid great segue into uh, our next guest (laughs) on our next guest we have two guests this time on the gap it's as i said it's a star-studded episode first up we have our lovely first guest, Josh. How are you doing today, Josh? Good. Glad to be back. Mm-hmm. Talking about my hero. My, my hero. hero. Let's go. Yeah, let's go. A my little, hero academia. A little tired. A little salty. It's snowing outside and it's April. Yeah, but... <laughs> exactly. It's it expected happens. at this point. <laughs> it happens. It's Canada. <clears throat> what do you expect? Yeah. And... Our second guest is the good old reliable Spencer. <laughs> How are you doing today, Spencer? I am doing fantastic. I woke up like 15 minutes ago. I got myself some Mountain Dew and Twizzlers. Let's get into this. We you always sound like you woke up. We can always ago. rely on Spencer to be on time and ready, right? Oh, shut up! It was only twice, and I fell asleep because I have depression. It was only twice in a row. Yeah, true. Never mind. Good. All right. So, uh, we have a lot of stuff to actually cover today, so we're gonna get right into it, so that way we don't waste any more time. So... Oh yeah, we have, what, like, two weeks? We have 11 pieces of news to cover, Mm. we have two seasons of anime to cover, and we have a new season of simulcasts to discuss. Hot damn. So we have... Hot damn. We have, we have, it's a packed episode today. Let's hope it doesn't go longer than three hours. It probably, it probably won't if we keep this nice and quick. So... We're going to start off with our normal, our simulcast discussion. Now, as we all know, another an- another season of anime has come and gone. Uh, we're now in the spring season, which means we have a bunch of new anime to talk about. But first, we are going to talk about our the shows that defined the winter season for us. We got our guilty pleasures. We have most surprising, and most disappointing, best looking, and our anime overall anime. Of the season, we're gonna start off with the most, or what we thought was the best looking show of the season. We're gonna start off with our guest, Josh. Josh, what do you think was the best looking show of winter 2018? You guys ready for my answer? Because I'm pretty sure all three of you guys know exactly what it's going to be. I wonder what it could be. I wonder what it's gonna be. It's actually Tagagi san. Tagat? Yeah. I like that. I Please like the explain. Animation. I like the animation for it. It was that's a very... that's a fucking curveball. <laughs> yeah, I like the animation for it. It was really pretty and it felt very homey, which fit the atmosphere of the show, <laughs> which is a very extremely slice of lifey. Mm-hmm. Very clean, like no problems with it. I thought it was really nice. Mm-hmm. I I, I will. Not deny that Takagi san is a very good looking show. It does look studio, quite good for what it is. What studio was, t- what studio was Takagi? I have no idea. <laughs> I will check I'll, che- right I'll check for you right now. I have, I, have, I have my cell phone. I know well. it's a lesser known studio, that's what I know for sure. Um, Shin A Animation. Yeah, so they're, they're a lesser known hmm. studio and f- and they did a very, very good job. But. Mm hmm. Uh, you guys thought I was going to do Psyche K? Uh, oh no, we thought, uh, because, uh, um, so Spencer, yes. what is your best looking show of the season? It's probably going to be the same for a lot of you, but the best looking anime of this season, in my opinion, has to go to, surprise, surprise, Violet Evergarden. Yeah, that's my pick too. <laughs> uh, Kyoto Animation, once again, did an outstanding job. The amount of detail and the amount of color in this show is breathtaking and it's just it's an absolutely stunning show even if you take out all the voice acting and just look at it through an art book you would see how much k 
care and effort went into look, making this look as realistic and just gorgeous as possible. It's, it's the best looking of the season. Uh, yeah, that's my pick as well. Shane, what is your pick? <laughs> Violet Evergarden. <laughs> yeah, because uh, let's be honest here, Violet Evergarden is not just one of the best looking, it's, it's not the best looking show of the season. It's arguably one of the best looking shows I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Of anything, live action or otherwise. And I and uh, I want to give mad props to everyone involved on Violet Evergarden to for making a show that is basically a movie quality episode every single for like thirteen weeks, basically. Uh, yeah, it's got to be hard, honestly. Like, yeah. it is Kyo Anime, and they obviously know what they're doing, but it's still got to be. Huge pain in the oh, ass. It's, yeah. Uh, Shane, do you have any uh, extra things to add? Not really. That hasn't already been said. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. So. So. Uh, so, we're going to go back to Josh. Josh, Josh, sometimes we watch anime and they, they sometimes surprise the hell out of us. And we're like, oh, that's actually surprisingly good. I didn't expect that to be. What is your most surprising show of the season? Most surprising show? Um, Pop Team Epic, because it came out of nowhere. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Same. I, it was, it, yeah. I knew about the manga. I've known about the manga for a while. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I knew it was ridiculous, but it came out of absolutely nowhere. I remember just walking in and... Shane and uh, someone else was watching it, and I was like, oh, holy shit, they made that into an anime. And it was fucking great. <laughs> yeah, the thing about Pop Team Epic is that I remember me and Shane were discussing this on the podcast. The first episode, we get it to, we were discussing the Winter Simulcast, the Winter Anime. We get to Pop Team Epic. We literally have no idea what this is. And we're just like, what the hell is this? <laughs> first episode comes out, we watch it, and, uh, it's something. It's definitely yeah. an anime that exists. <laughs> it's something, alright. It's I something that exists. Mm. Yep. Yeah, one thing that surprised me about Pop Team was definitely how funny it was. I, I, I was, was, well, I, not how funny it was, I, it was funny from the get-go, but, like, but like how consistently funny it was. It wasn't just a one trick pony. Mm-hmm. Oh, it, like some serious props have to go to, you know, the amount of different types of animation they did. Mm-hmm. Whether it be traditional, whether it be sand animation, <laughs> whether it be stop motion puppet, mu- puppet music numbers, whether it be th- 3D CG. A- animation CG with French subtitles. Like, like, there was so many things that could have gone wrong, and I'm gonna, I might steal what you what you were gonna say, Matt. But Pop Team had no right to be as good as it turned out to be. It didn't. It really didn't. No. <laughs> Listen, the amount of references, up to date references as well, that I was able to throw in. <laughs> like you can watch an anime and it would throw in probably like a year or two old reference. The show kept up, fucking fidget spinners in the first episode. <laughs> Was... And it worked. It wasn't, like, forced. It felt funny. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was perfect. Mm-hmm. One of the... And, uh, I think out of all the shows this season, I think Pop Team is the one that I want the second... A second season the most. Mm-hmm. Um, Just to see what kind of crazy bullshit they'll do next. Yeah, I do think a second season will come at some point. I don't know if we're gonna get that yeah. this year, next year, but we will get a second well, season. Well, yeah, but... I'm going to mm-hmm. love it. What about Sosago? She has to pick between being a bride and an idol. What's she gonna pick? I don't know, Spencer. I don't know, and I want, and I need to know. I need Fall to know. in love Fall again, love next, again season. Next, week, next season. Next season. <laughs> uh, um, uh, but no, that's, that's probably all of ours is pop team. Yeah, but sometimes we get disappointed as well as being surprised. So I'm gonna mm. go to Spencer. Spencer, what is your most disappointing show of the winter season? My it most doesn't have disappointing... to be bad. It doesn't have to be a bad yeah. show. Yeah, yeah. My most, but my most disappointing anime of this season is the Genji Ito collection. Same, same. Um, no, Matt knows this. You two probably might not, but That's for a person, one, right? for a person mm-hmm. l- like me who doesn't normally watch horror anime, 
and like horror movies, I'm a huge fan of Junji Ito. Like the guy is outsta- like he's a fucking uh, auteur of horror. He's a mad and genius. And when they yeah, he's a mad genius. And when they first announced the Junji Ito collection, I was really excited because I loved his work. And then it became Studio Periot. It's Studio and Dean. I was so it's Dean. Studio Dean. It's Dean, not Periot. Dean. And I was like, oh, okay, it could still be good. And then I'm like, and then I watched the first couple episodes, and I'm like, was it good, this Spencer? Got no. It was okay. Some okay. Um, <laughs> kind of. Some of it some, works. Some of it yes. works. But it wasn't given a good budget, and some of the stories were, like, confused even me to why they were picked. There's a, there's a, it, it, it's a very strange... The, the reason, like, a lot of the times they seem to pick stories out of random. There's no unifying theme to what, what stories they pick at a time. Like... When you start off, like, they start off with one of Junji Ito's more comedic stories, which I don't get. Why would you start off a horror series with one of his yeah. more comedic stuff? Why? I, I just don't understand. And, yeah, some stories really work. The ones that work are really, really good. Unfortunately, they're, so, they're far and few between. Because just because the budget for this was so low. And you can tell, like, they did not have the money to do this properly yeah like and... like remember at the beginning of the season matt when we were talking about this and we were like man the animation looks really unique but kind of cheap but it, it yeah. could work yeah apparently it didn't work it works for only a few so it works for a few stories like the more cerebral horror it works um but a lot of the times they want to go for uh Junjito's, like more ups like weird and like gross out horror at times and they don't just don't have the budget in one of the episodes i think it was like episode 11 or 10 they do uh something involving psychics and it uh, like imagine mob psycho 100 if mob psycho 100's budget was like a toothpick and mm. it did not look it did not look good the actual story itself was all right but it, it didn't it it was not good, so it sucks. But that was the, the that was the show that saddened me the most this season was Joe because I was I was really really looking forward to it. I think it was in my top five most anticipated of the season, and look what happened. Uh, the opening is lit though, actually. So that's the one the, was the one phrase I go. It's probably like one of the best openings of the season. Uh, Shane, what yes. is your most disappointing show of the season? <clears throat> okay, well. I've already kind of discussed this with Matt, and I'm probably going to get some flack. I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but my most disappointing is probably Takagi. Hmm. Really? Yeah. Um, <gasps> okay, I appreciate I, I accept that. I'll, fine. I'll quickly explain. It's just because, um, to me, and I didn't watch all of it, I only watched the first four or so episodes... To me, it felt really repetitive, because it seems, especially early on, that they just rely on the same joke and the same punchline over and over again. It just seems like they repeat themselves all the time, and I get why they did that. I completely understand why they went that approach, but to me, it just really kind of didn't... It, it really didn't keep my attention. Okay, so I can actually... I can say... Well, they do keep the same joke. They do they do it in d ways that are so different that it keeps it fresh, in my opinion, at least. I'm like, that's Especially a, further on. I'm like, that's, a, that's the thing. Like, I'm not saying that it's bad. It's a very good show. It's just, to me, it felt repetitive enough to kind of lose my interest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what I'm mm -hmm. going with. Yeah. Yep. So, Josh, what was your most disappointing show? My most disappointing show was Psyche Kuswo no Sign On. Because what? it's too good that it overshadowed everything. You fucker. I was just disappointed at how brilliant it was. It overshadowed everything. Oh, you know, every, things like Place Further Than the Universe and Violet, Violet Overgarden. Oh. It, 
Two and Citrus. Oh, legit though, there was really nothing that I watched this season that disappointed me. I, although, to be honest, I mm. didn't watch oh, it Oh, uh, you, uh, you got lucky, because uh, we all had something. Uh, so, I really uh, haven't watched that much. Yeah. Also, so, uh, Shane. Yes. Uh, name, uh, name the anime that was your biggest guilty pleasure of the season. I'm pretty Probably sure everyone agrees. For all of us. It's probably the same for all of us. I'm pretty sure everyone movies. agrees it's Killing Bites. <laughs> it's Killing Bites. It's yeah. Killing Bites. It's yeah. Killing Bites. Killing Bites is... Uh, Shane, please explain your reasoning for picking the masterpiece that is Killing Bites. Because Killing mm. Bites is the worst garbage you could possibly watch. But at the same well, time, we'll it's the best garbage you could possibly watch. It is amazing. Garbage. It's just it's just trashy and over the top, and it really pushes a lot of boundaries. But it's just so much fun to watch. Oh, it's it's extremely fun to watch. But yeah, let's get this out of the way. Obstensively speaking, it's a terrible anime. Oh yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to defend it, is, it. It's terrible. Yeah. With its with its flagrant sequel baiting and over reliance of sexual assault as a theme, and and as much as I loved it, the ending was stupid. Like, like n not episode uh, twelve. Twelve? Yeah, not episode twelve. Episode eleven. How the actual destroyal was finished was stupid. We can all agree on that. It was stupid. a fucking rabbit tripping over a rock and back kicking a fucking cheetah in the jaw, yeah, knocking her unconscious. Funny. It was funny, but at the same time, it was stupid. <laughs> I I thoroughly enjoyed the absolute trash that was Killing Bites. However, if you're going to watch it, watch it at your house alone. Watch in it your at room. your house late at night when everyone is in bed and make sure all the doors are closed. And make sure you have headphones, too. And also make sure your pants are off. I mean, what? What? Episode 7, you just don't want to let people see you. Episode 7, no. Episode 7 is when you take the pants off. That's what, that's... That's mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's when you take the, those pants off. Moving uh, on. Yeah, moving on. Uh, he's the bit we time for the biggie. So uh, I'm gonna start with uh, Spencer on this one. Spencer. Mm -hmm. Yes. What is your anime of the season? Okay, so you and me talked about this a bit yesterday about how I don't feel comfortable stating animes that aren't finished yet. Okay, that I'm not finished, but are technically finished. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, man, I might pick this. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to. Uh, fucking Hakata Tenkatsu Ramens is my anime of the season. Oh, who would have fucking I guessed? I fucking figured. Uh, Hakata Tenkatsu is... It's, it's almost like an anime that was made specifically for me. All it's missing is Cowboys. And it just would have been Spencer anime. And who knows? It could have um, cowboys later on. Who knows? It could have cowboys. And the show is ridiculous enough. The show is ridiculous enough that it might actually show up at some point. And I would, I would completely look. It's as a person who I haven't actually mentioned this on the podcast because I have come up. Um, I adore Bakuno. I adore that 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 anime. Um, so for kind of like a Bakuno, but I guess actually it would be better to say da 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 da. But I actually haven't seen da 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 da. So. Like a Bakano, um, in Japan with Hitman, who would, it's it, it's it's ridiculous. The yeah, it's English season two in like not childhood. The English voice cast is incredibly good. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and they somehow they they use exposition, but they put it in baseball terms, and and the episode titles and the baseball knowledge actually play into the show in like re, like like understandable like logical ways in universe and s some of the plans are so absolutely ridiculous that it's it's insane that they even work out but the anime actually looks pretty good it does, um, it looks, it it does pretty good. the opening is dope yeah. might might be my favorite kokoku is close um but it's just hakata tonkatsu has been nothing but a joy and a pleasure to watch. It's just fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had to, yeah, I had tons of fun with it. Uh, Josh, what is your anime of the season? Even not to ask. Yeah, we don't no. have to ask. Yeah. We have to ask. It's obviously Citrus. <laughs> yes, the best name. 
ever, obviously. Psyche! Kusuo! No! Sinon! Yeah, Psyche K. Seriously, are you guys surprised? Like, it's, no, not even, not even close. It's dude. back. Spencer has watched Psyche. I've shown you guys episode of Psyche. It's back. It's better. It's bigger. It's funnier. It's not dubbed yet, but you know what? It's still pretty good. Yeah. But it's just, it was funny as all hell. I'm a huge Psyche fan, and I was so glad to see it back, and it just captured everything that I loved about Season 1. That may be true, but have you considered this? Listen, the dry humor of it, new characters, the, just, uh, it, it was per mm. I, I can't say anything, it's perfect. And that fucking opening, man. Mm. Oh. Mm. The right. Otome, the Otomoi fucking <laughs> screens, oh. Oh, yeah. Mm. 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 Alright, so Shane. Whoa. Um, I think, uh. Actually, what is your anime of the season? I think you know what it is. Place Further Than the Universe? Place Further Than the I Universe. Know, I know what it is. Not so. Yeah, Place Further it's Than like, the Universe. It's like, here's the thing. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, but. It really came down to the wire between Place Further and Violet. But to me, I personally enjoyed Place Further just a tiny little bit more. Than Violet, just because I resonated with these characters more. Just because they're a lot more relatable to our demographic. Like, I think we've I think we've all been in a position where, you know, we're trying to find our place in life and, you know, someone like Kamari who just wants to do something big before they get out of school because they think it's all downhill from there. It's like that that resonates with me because I think we've all been there before. Yeah, we all have been there before. Not all of us have been in a war scenario dealing with PTSD. Yeah, so, and um, well, not yet at least. Not yet, but j just everything about Place Further was just extremely well executed to like the highest degree, and just the journey to Antarctica and the payoff afterwards is just ah, oh, it's, it's just perfect. it's perfect. With that being now, said, now Matt. <laughs> yes. Yours is more of a curveball, because I really don't know what you're going to pick. It's really, like I said, it's down between Plays Frozen and Violet for me. Um, because Plays Further, I was raving. I've been, I've been raving about Plays Further ever since that first episode. But Violet really... When Violet was good, it was beyond anything else that was on this season. Um, like episodes eight to ten in particular of mm -hmm. Violet are some of the mm -hmm. best anime I've seen in years. Yep, um, specifically so episode ten. Sp episode yes. ten made me bawl my eyes out. So, but in the end, as a whole, I gotta give the edge to place further. Um, I have to give the edge to place further because Violet. Even though I do think that Violet, just like Place Further, is a 10 out of 10 show, mm -hmm. Violet is a slow burner, and I feel like and I feel like that. While I have a feel, I think everyone would love Violet. It's definitely going to take a while to. It takes a lot longer to get into Violet than it does. Oh yeah. Place Further. I was um, into Place Further in episode one and two. For Violet, it took approximately five episodes for me to actually, like, care about the character of Violet. It's a very much a slow burner, and while it's really much, what's really worth it in the end, mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to give it to Place Further. Also, I think Place Further, uh, um, and while Violet hit me more, uh, like, in terms of tears and emotion, I think Place Further works better overall a little bit in terms of its emotional payoffs um probably because it balances it also it also the way it balances comedy and drama yeah it is genuinely funny genius. oh the mm -hmm. show is genuinely hilarious i was crying laughing all the whole time um while also act then actually crying yep um mm-hmm um, the set and the next. So yeah, pl my pick for anime of the season is a place further than a universe. Just the just the scene with the emails alone is just enough to. Uh, ugh. Yeah, so that's ugh. easily the, 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 my anime of the season. 
but Violet Violet came close. Violet Violet's a very very fun. close second. Very very close second. Um, so since we've picked all of that stuff, yeah, give a quick a quick run a quick discussion on the top three shows we're gonna be watching this season. We okay, we are watching, doing top three. Cool. Yeah, top three. We're doing top three. We may be doing. We may be watching more. Um, I know for sure that me and Shane are watching more than just three. Oh, yeah. Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm also watching more than three. Um, um, so, uh, without, uh, so, uh, but we're just going to be talking top three because of just time constraints and also, also we don't want to spend way too much time on this. So, um, the only, the only, uh, thing that we're going to say is that I have, is that we're not counting MHA season three as a oh, part of this. Oh, we are? Okay. Um, yeah, because that's obvious. Well, we're, of course, we're gonna be watching MHA season three. If we're not watching MHA season three, what are you? What are we doing? Get off this podcast, please. Yes. Leave this Discord voice I'll channel. Here, end my recording um, right now. I might just wait until it's all done. Binge it. I don't know yet. Binge it. I mean, I, that mean you mean you? That means you're it. waiting until like November, dude. It's twenty five episodes. Um, no, you wait until September ish. Um, that's when it wraps up. Um, but uh, let's do. What's Shane? Shane, what are the top three shows you can be watching outside of MHA? Okay. Um, well, seeing as how the season's already started, and we've already seen a couple of these shows because they have any of the episodes yet because of uh, because of uh, stuff that's been going because of I've been busy, so I haven't been able to sit down and actually watch. Well, them. we've seen you. We watched Fist of the Blue Sky and Kitaro together. So yeah, yes, uh, Kitaro. Uh, both of them are, st- are not going to be in my to watch list this season, but I will I will say that if anyone wants to should wa- wants is thinking about watching Kataro, do it. It's yes. excellent. Um, but anyway, since the season's already started and a couple of these shows have already premiered, I've already gotten to watch some of them. So my in- my initial list has kind of changed a little bit based on what I've already like previewed, but um, I have to say my top three. Are uh, Golden Kamui. Nice. Uh, P5, the animation. Nice. And pro- and, and Kataro. Because Kataro, like, blew me away. Mm-hmm. Kataro blew you. That's, uh, I mean, Kataro, Kataro was. Uh, that first episode was fucking. Bad. That first episode was fucking great. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, yeah. I loved it more than I thought it was going to. That was really good. Um, so Spencer, what are the top three shows you're going to be watching? Um, hmm, this is tough because a a lot of these are in uh, Moonspeak and I don't speak it, so I apologize. I have to go up a bit to get the actual names. But um, of the my top three that I'm looking forward to, uh, Golden Kamui is one of them because it's a western and I like westerns. It is a western, yes. Um, actually, I'll just give you a look. Uh, two is well, is probably going to be um, M- Megaro Box. Megalobox. 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 Yeah. Um, because I like boxing animes, and I've seen Ashida no Joe, and it's very good. And um, it's boxing anime and it's with boxing robots. Anime. Yeah. Oh, there you go. And number three is probably going to be... Uh, I'm 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 not gonna say uh, P5 because that's obvious, um, but I'm gonna go with Serato Sumibito uh, Ryu to Odoro oh, or Dance, Dance with Dragons. Dancing with Dragons, because that looks yeah. legitimately dope. And obviously, I'm gonna watch a lot more. But those are the three I'm excited about. Yeah, uh, the three I'm the most excited. Actually, let's go to Josh first. Josh, you can, what go, are you? You can go first, Matty. Oh, why well, thank you, Josh. <laughs> um, why, thank you. I've um, raised him to be a gentleman. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, you have. Um, my, to- my top three um, outside of MHA. Uh, number one is Golden Kamui. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, my second one is P5. Mm-hmm. Um, my third one is one that I hope gets licensed because it premieres today. Oh, I know what this as is. As we're recording this. Uh, is, uh, is Magical Girl Sight. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, I'm really death, excited about Death me. Battle Royale. Horror with magical girls. girls. Horror. Majuka oh, Majuka. I know. I've heard this series is fucked. And I cannot wait. Hopefully um, it gets licensed. Um, It should. 
Um, I have a feeling it will. Who knows? Um, even maybe even by the time this episode goes up, um, Crunchyroll will be like, "Yo, we're up, simulcasting." It, we will get new. We'll have news on whether or not it's licensed. If it's not licensed, then uh oh. Um, uh, that's all I have to say about that. Anyways, Josh, what are your top three of the season? Oh, you my top watching. three that I'm rewatching. Number one is High School DD Hero. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fucking. Yeah, fucking hyped. Um, number mm-hmm. two is probably SAO Alternate. Oh, yeah, SAO Alternate. Forgot about I'm that. Gun Gal or whatever. Listen, Gun Gal Online. Original SAO was pretty shitty, but this one's done by a different studio. Mm-hmm. So, who knows? It might be good. And then the third one. I don't even know if I have a third one. I have a pretty light schedule for the semester. Or for this, um. This semester. This semester of fucking school, my uh, The summer semester of anime. <laughs> I don't know, honestly. <sighs> Probably just Psyche K again. Oh, yeah, because Psyche, Psyche K is. Double a, core. Is a, it is yep. a double mm-hmm. core, so that so, counts. Yeah. So it does there actually you go. count. High School DD, SAO, and Psyche K. Maybe Tokyo Ghoul Re. It looks like it's doing pretty good so far. <laughs> I've heard decent mm. things about the first episode, so, um, so let's hope let's hope it's good. It's gonna be twelve episodes though, so who knows? Um, mm. uh, I'm you look. I'm a Tokyo Ghoul fan, so I'm gonna watch it out of out of uh, hope, hope, and also uh, just uh, commitment, just ob- obligation, because because I'm a big fan of Tokyo Ghoul, and let's just hope it let's just hope it captures the tone of the manga better than. The then, past 24 then episodes. fucking Road A. Yeah. Road A. It's in, uh, like the original too. Yeah. The original didn't capture it either. Um, the original but, captured it in like the first episode. I guess you know. All, also. The first episode spectacular. Uh, special honorable mention to obviously something I haven't mentioned, but it should be uh, Steins Gate second season. Oh yeah, Steins Gate Zero. Yep. Uh, I forgot that come dash back. Oh, I'm excited for that. And right. Fooly Cooly is also. Uh, Fooly Cooly is a weird one because Fooly Cooly is airing in Jul- in June. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll be discussing that in a in, in a bit. That. Um, but uh, but uh, with FSL FSL, uh, that's I don't count that because that's airing in June. Um, and it's and you know and plus it fe- uh, I uh Fooly Cooly is in that weird position where it's literally an anime that only exists because Adult Swim funded it. Yeah. So, mm. Yeah. <clears throat> It's like the Bayonetta uh, conundrum. If someone hadn't jumped in and funded it, it wouldn't have been made. Yeah. Uh, so, and with that, we're done talking about the simulcast, and we'll come back to you in a couple in the next couple in the next couple podcasts about our thoughts on the anime airing this wonderful season. All right. So, are all of you ready for some news? News. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Slay Queen. Yeah. Love news. <laughs> <We're fucking laughs> Give me that news. I need that news. Give me it. All right. So, um, our fruit. We have actually quite a large amount of news to talk about. So let's get through this as quick um, as we can. Yeah, as quickly as we can because we let's because we want to talk about my hero. Um, first of all, first up, uh, as you know, we covered Mob Cycle 100 a couple. I want to say two podcasts ago. Yes. On the podcast, covered in two podcasts ago. Um, our f- and our first big uh, uh, news is that Mob Psycho season, uh, Mob Psycho One Hundred, is finally getting the second season. Uh, and it was announced on the at the Mob Psycho One Hundred Reagan event a couple of weeks ago. The evening session of the Mob Psycho 100 Reagan Shirazazu Kisake Irino Sakisi, or the Mis- Miraculous Unknown Psychic event, announced on Sunday that a production on a second season for Bones' television anime of One's Mob Psycho 100 manga has been officially greenlit. Yeah, listen, my pants came off as soon as I heard that. <laughs> the original manga creator One uh, launched Mob Psycho 100 series on Little Sunday in 2012 and later in Soccer Gun's Manga 1 app in 2014 and it ended in December. He also said that there was a spin off of Mob Psycho 100 coming called Reagan, which would start up in the coming months or coming weeks, maybe as well. Mm-hmm. I'm fucking so happy, man. 
Um, I remember telling you guys about what, fucking how I loved Mob Psycho all the time, and then you guys finally watched, and I was like, "Fuck sake, now I can actually talk to you guys about it." <laughs> like, I yeah, mean, literally, I'm I think pretty that's... sure like they had watched it like be <laughs> way before I did. Oh yeah. I've watched it before all three of you guys did. Though. Yeah, that's, that's true. Funny much. Yeah. Here's the thing: I don't. I think the general consensus among this group is that fuck yes. <laughs> It's fuck, fuck yes! I'm really excited for this. Oh yeah, I'm excited for all this. Yeah. Give me the more. Is, the real question is, when will it air? Probably not mm. till like, probably not till like either late this year or next year. I'm assuming next year. I don't year. think it's gonna be this year. I don't think. It's no, gonna be this I think year. it's gonna be early first quarter. Spring 2019. I'm gonna spring. No, spring 2019 is probably my hero though. Um. You know what I'm gonna right. say? I'm gonna say fall 2019. That's I think that's the earliest we're getting it. Fall 2019. Fall 2019. Yeah. Yeah, that will probably be it. Cause... Yeah, fall 2019. MS 100 or MP 100. Mm -hmm. Uh, 20 it aired. 2016. 16. Summer, yeah, yeah, summer 2016. So three year yeah. gap. That would be a bit right. Because um, I'm sure only... they want to get one punch out before that though. And the only reason I say that it's going to take that long is because the first Mob Psycho infamously had a very difficult production and was, like, apparently very hard on the animators. Because the Gee, I wonder why! So, they, I think they were going really to really want to allocate the resources to do this. And it was really expensive to make, too. Well, so yeah, it was a crazy-ass fucking Yeah, it was really expensive. So, they're going to... So, but... Uh, I'm really excited for it. It's going to be great. Gonna be lit. All right, and uh, so Shane, mm -hmm. you've been wanting to watch. Have you seen Made in Abyss yet? I have not. Well, <laughs> you better get on that. <laughs> that because, backfired on you. Um, uh, because Made in Abyss is getting uh, is that they find they they have confirmed. That Made in Abyss is a, that a sequel is underway for Made in Abyss. The official website for the television anime adaptation of Hakihito's Tsukihishi's Made in Abyss manga revealed on Monday that the anime is getting a sequel as well as two compilation films these winter. The compilation films will co will be essentially recaps of uh, recap films of the first season, and that the sequel will more than, and then the sequel currently is scheduled for release sometime next year. So, anyone? So I know I don't think anyone else here has seen Made in Abyss. If you haven't seen Made in Abyss, I'm gonna watch Made in Abyss. I'm gonna re re repeat this. Is this the one with the small people, or is this the one with the robots? <laughs> yes and yes. What is that description? Is this the one with the small people, or is this the one with the robot? No, it's about a it's about a young Wait, girl who meets a robot. Oh, okay, that one. Robots. Okay. Is this near Automata? Is this Evangelion? You know, what the game, you know what the show is about as fuck is Neo Automata, so maybe actually. <laughs> you ain't you ain't too far off, Josh. Fuck. <laughs> Just fuck. But fuck, uh ma man. but Made in the Abyss is getting a sequel, so if anyone hasn't seen it, it this is might actually be the best time to possibly do it. It's probably one of the best anime of the several of the past couple of years. And but it's also one that you will watch and hate and cry on the inside. Watch so, now exclusively on Amazon Prime Video. It's also on High Dive. Um, oh, is it? Uh, it's Hive. It's only it's a uh, it's uh it's on High Dive now. It I don't I don't think in Canada though. Uh, no, it's High Dive streamed the series outside the United States. So it should be available on High Dive because Sentai Filmworks picked up the show. Huh, so well, it should be on High Dive. I'm going to check that I real love, quick just to I, uh, I love when things come out here in Canada and not in America so we can laugh at them when they finally are like, man, Violet fucking Evergarden. Evergarden is amazing. And I'm like, bitches, I just watched the last episode today and you're only getting it now. Wah, wah. <laughs> but it's also funny, though, when the voice actresses and actors themselves don't get to watch the show until now and I'm like you were in it you did the voice you, you were that's very true you are <laughs> Violet it's just because Netflix is a bunch of stupid poopy faces mm -hmm. <laughs> poopy faces are you good Shane uh, I was buying you time 
Well, hold on. Let me. Let me I'm He's now on high. Uh, okay. In that case, uh, so our sponsor for this uh, <laughs> pa- uh, podcast is uh, WW shit. WW shit. <laughs> uh, www dot um, highdive dot com forward slash. Oh god! If highdive sponsored us, I'd be freaking out. <laughs> Do you want to watch a large catalog of animes as? As you, one second, got to scroll down the page. As you, um, anytime you want, well, join High Dive before April, days of time, 9th, I think, to get uh, locked in with, to the three ninety nine dollars uh, price thing. Uh, I'm not getting paid for this. Wait, I'm not getting paid for this? Obviously not. Okay, you can stop stalling for time. I have the answer. <laughs> okay. Made in the Abyss is on High Dive only in the UK. Wow. The fuck? Everywhere forward else it's the gap. prime video. <laughs> forward slash the gap. <laughs> the fuck? That's uh, broken, man. So yeah, if oh, you want to watch it, you either piracy or prime video. So you're probably picking piracy. Because yeah. who has prime I'm video? Suing. I'm um, suing. Alright, so, um, moving on with new news, um... One of the most critically acclaimed manga of all time is getting an anime adaptation. What could it be? Oh um, uh, uh, this is a lesser note. Uh, I, uh, I'm a fan of this, but I don't know if anyone else is. What uh, could it be? An official website and Twitter account launched on Monday revealed that Makahoto Yukimura's critically acclaimed Vinland Saga manga is getting an television adaptation by Wit Studio, the same people who bought us Agent Magus, oh, Shack on Titan... Uh, Cabanari, uh, uh, Sarah for the End, and, um, and uh, After the Rain. Oh, jeez. Um, animation production company Twin Engine began streaming a promotional video for the series. The series has no release date and will more than likely not premiere for a while, but, um, but, um, the big news is that, um, is that, um, is that this show is going to be the first anime to be made exclusively for Amazon Prime, not just licensed. That this oh, they're actually Amazon. making it themselves, okay. It will air on television and stream exclusively on Amazon Prime in both Japan and overseas. So this is a Amazon show. So this is that they can, so they're going the Netflix route. The, which means that this can which means that this show is also uh this that means Vinland Saga is famous for being called the Berserk for Vikings. So they can get away with all the violence and sex that they want. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Seeing as how I Killing Bites was uncut. Yeah, uh, Killing, yeah. Bites made for, Killing Bites was not made for Amazon, though. So, but still, uh, they but, managed they managed to get it uncensored, so they can do whatever they want with this. Yeah. Um, now, I, uh, I'm like the only one out of like tw- of like 30 people who have read Vinland Saga. Um... Uh, I have a fe- I have a feeling that uh, S- Shane, you should read Vinland Saga, because um, I know you'd like it. I know Spencer, you would like it too. Mm-hmm. So, I think all of you would like Vinland Saga. I've um, I've heard of it. it. The name is familiar. Yeah, it's one of those it's one of those manga that uh, everyone has heard of, but nobody has read. Um, and it's one of and it's definitely an it's one of those also those shows that people. A manga that people thought was never going to get an anime adaptation because the manga has been around since 2005. Um, it's still going. The manga's still going. It's monthly. It has like 150 chapters and still going. Um, it's like, but it's like, it's like, it's basically berserk for Vikings. A.K. It's like that. It's one of those long-running, super critically acclaimed manga that's like a great that would be extremely hard to adapt. Um, oh boy. <laughs> uh, but. We have Wit Studio in charge, and let's be honest here, Wit Studio is pretty fucking great. Mm-hmm. So, um, I'm, 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 and they showed off a promotional video, and they said they're gonna stick, they're gonna try to stick to the original manga art as much as possible. Um, so I'm really excited for this. I'm really excited for this. Uh, this has the potential to be one of the best anime of the decade if this is as good as the manga. So I'm really, really hoping that this ends up good. Watch Speaking it exclusively on Amazon Prime Video when it launches in 2022. <laughs> um, speaking of stuff that I hope is good, uh, uh, as we all know, Code Geass is coming back. Yes. Um, 
uh, Code Geass is coming back, and the official Twitter account for the Code Geass anime franchise revealed that the English subtitle for the Code Geass Fukatsu no Lelouch, or Resurrection of the Lelouch, sequel project is going to be called Resurrection. Wow. Spelt really weirdly, though. It's spelled it like Z's? Re- shit? It's, it's spelled like with re semicolon resurrection. Wait, like R E in think re zero, like re semicolon resurrection. What is this, re zero? Yeah, R Yeah, R E semicolon resurrection. Like that? Yeah, the account for- Japan. Uh no. Like like this. For, for for the audio listeners, he's typing into Discord. That's retarded. While these idiots, <laughs> while these idiots fiddle with their keyboards, I'd like to take a moment to uh, talk about our sponsor. A sponsor for this podcast is Crunchyroll. Our sponsor for this podcast is not it's Crunchyroll. Now. We are go to Crunchyroll dot com slash the gap to get your free negative two day trial of Crunchyroll <laughs> That's Premium. Right. You're your bank card is automatically charged for two months, and you don't get to watch any of the premium shows. We we just stole your money. You still Thanks get four eighty p in ads. So, <laughs> Thanks for supporting your, your local shit podcast. Well, too bad I can't even load four eighty p. So that's fine by me. Uh, yeah, the account also further revealed that the English subtitles for the previous three compilation films will be initiation, transgression, glorification, and the sequels. Re semicolon surrection subtitle is a continuation of the theme of those subtitles. Except it's not. You wanna know why? Because resurrection has a fucking semicolon in it and it's fucking dumb. I just wanted to bring this up. This is not important information. I just wanted to bring this up because this subtitle is retarded. I just like the idea that because it's R E semicolon, it's a reply to the word surrection. <laughs> Re surrection. Hello, Mr. Lelouch. Hello, Mr. Lelouch. I am here to... Oh, uh... Eh, never mind. Just watch Code Geass. I was gonna spoil the ending. Just watch Code Geass. Yeah, Geos. don't no, no, do just, that. No, don't, no, no. Just watch Code Geass. Watch all 50 episodes of Code Geass. Um, but it's, it's very good. Moving on, um, I think some of you may have seen the trailer for this, and if you haven't, well, uh, oops. Um... <laughs> oops? Um... Um, Dolt Swim announced on Tuesday that the first FLCL sequel season, which had they have been revealed, the names will be FLC Progre- FLCL Progressive and FLCL Alternative, respectively. FLCL Progressive second season will premiere on June second at eleven thirty on Toonami. How many episodes? Um, uh, I believe six. Six, just like the old one. Yeah, the second sequel titled FLCL Alternative is slated for September and will also be six episodes. Um. The network's YouTube channel begins streaming an English uh, a trailer, and and Kari Walgreen will return to voice Haruko herself. Um, mm. uh, so I am I have been waiting for this anime for now, uh, years. FLCL was originally done by Gainax, right? Uh, Gainax. Gainax was a co-production between Gainax and Production IG. Uh, really? However, that's a good fucking mix. However, since uh, Gainax sold the rights permanently to Production IG, and the first thing Production IG did was commission sequels. So, Production IG is doing this alone, along with Adult Swim, who is co-funding this, because apparently, because Adult Swim... Because Adult Swim has Elvis. a hard-on for Fooly Cooly. Yeah, they do. Uh, so, they're gonna watch the shit out of this. Um... The staff, there are different... Now, one thing I find interesting about FLCL, this new two new seasons, is that while they have the same director and supervisors, instead of the same chief director and the same supervisors, they have different... Outside of that, outside of that, they have completely different staffs. Same, different, different animators, different characters, uh, different, uh, different directors, different, uh, different lead animators. The only things that, that cross over are character designs, scripts... And the music, which is done by the Pillows, who will be returning to do the music. Um, so we'll see. <laughs> um, one thing I find interesting is, and uh, also I want to add on to this, uh, for their April Fool's joke. Oh, uh, God. Adult Swim decided to air the first episode of Seal Alternative in sub. Um, and then proceeded to air the rest of Toonami in Japanese. Yep. 
<laughs> as I soon as very... as soon as the clock struck midnight, the rest of their fucking lineup was all in Japanese. Which I find, but well, one that's kind of cool. Also, fucking um, uh, Tom the uh, Toonami bot, you know uh, Tom. He reviewed Neo Automata live on television, so. It was all around. Um, it was a good April Fool's joke. It was a good April Fool's joke. Adult Swim's got top tier April Fool's jokes, mm-hmm. so I'm always lo- I always look forward to what they're doing on April Fools. <clears throat> um, like that one year they just decided to air the room for 24 hours. Um, I thought that was funny. Um, but um, I'm excited for FLCL. I know Josh is excited for FLCL. Yes. Um, Shane has not seen FLCL. The Heathen. I um, have a reason I have to. to. Re- I, I have to rewatch the first season of FLCL. It's been a while since I've seen it. It actually has been a while since I've seen FLCL, so I have to rewatch it too. Um, but I'm, I love. I've been waiting for this sequel for years, so that's coming. Um, next up, we have a lot of Dragon Ball news to talk about. <gasps> I wonder who has enjoyed Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> Don't um, shoot! Spoilers, it's not it's flat. Me. Uh, the big, the biggest news is that Dragon Ball Super got a teaser for its for the film. Um, Bandai Namco and Mer- Entertainment America debuted the trailer for the upcoming 20th Dragon Ball film, tentatively titled Dragon Ball Super. During a mobile game, more during a mobile game live stream presentation on Tuesday, the film's producer Norihiro Hashida said that in the presentation that the staff was aiming for a global release on de- December 14th, the day it will open in Japan. Um, Hasita said in the presentation that the staff spent over a, a year on the new design for Goku and noted that it has been two decades since Goku has gone through such a radical redesign. Suri says Dragon Ball unit uh, director Akio Ukiya teased that the opponent with the green aura who appears in the video might be a Saiyan. It has since been confirmed since then and it is. It's a fucking Saiyan. Um, uh, if you all haven't seen the trailer, I recommend doing it. It is so fluid. It's so it's good. It's some of the boy, best. I don't watch Dragon Ball, so nah. <laughs> it's some of the best looking like Dragon Ball animation I've seen since like. Fuck. Well, Resurrection oh. F. Yeah, it's, Resurrection F. It's such a huge shakeup for the series because ever since like the late parts of Z, like Boo Saga, it's pretty much been the same character designs since the late '90s. So the fact that they're taking a risk. And like doing a dramatic redesign to the point where you can like visibly tell, oh, this is extremely different to the norm. Yeah. And I I but, love it. I love the new design. But the Sakuga, the Sakuga. If the whole oh. film looks like that, ooh, we're in this for is, something, man. This is also the 20th Dragon Ball film, meaning that this is a milestone film. Damn, there's been 20 Dragon Ball films. Yep. If you count. If you count all the, the the four original movies, the fifteen for Z, <laughs> and, and now this one, it is twenty. No one counts um, GT because who? No, no, just keep going. GT no is not classified as a movie, anyways. It's classified as a yeah, movie it's a special. special. It did, so does not count. Um, so I'm ex- so, but I'm excited for this. Um, I I. Dr- I really hope that the Saiyan in the teaser does end up being Yamoshi, the original Super Saiyan God. I, I really hope. It's, I have a feeling it's Yamoshi. I like, hope it's Yamoshi. Really sure. Like, Toriyama wouldn't have built him up in interviews if he wasn't going to use him. So. Exactly. Is this new movie slash series is this done by Toriyama, or is this... Uh, yes, it is. It's Screenplay it's super- and script is yeah. The script is written by Toriyama, so okay. And it's a and it's a uh, and it's a sequel to Super. It's a direct continuation from the end of Super. So like right after the Tournament of Power. Y- yeah. Well, not maybe not right after. Yeah. There's probably gonna be no. a little bit of a time skip, but like yeah, it follows maybe the like events. Six months to a year. Yeah. Um. All right. So, in other Dragon Ball news, uh, Toei Animation will be it has found it said they do an established a department specifically focused on Dragon Ball. 
Um, Toy Animation House last Friday will introduce a number of department restructurings on April 1st, part of which will be establishment of a third department under its anime planning production headquarters that will mainly focus on Dragon Ball products. The person that will head the new department will be Asu uh, Atsushi Suzuki, who mainly, wor who mainly worked on a as a producer on the Digimon Adventure Tri Trilogy, as well as the movie Spell from Paradise, as well as addition to retaining his titles of, ex of ex Executive and Business Development Department Head. Um, the other two divisions will also be reorganized. The Television Planning Department, which focuses on television and anime, will be renamed into Planning Division 1. Um, it will retain its current focus. Under the department will be Video Planning Office 1, uh, the Overseas Art Video Planning Office, and the Video Planning Management Office. Takashi Wasisho, who did uh, who worked on uh, Tiger Mask W in the Precure series, will remain head of the department, as well as Video Planning Management Office. He will no longer be the head of the film office. Uh, the video planning department, which focuses on CG anime, will be renamed into Planning Division Department 2 and will retain its current focus. Under the department will be Video Planning Office 2 and Media Planning and the Media Planning Office and will be run by Koishi Noguchi, who worked on Kato the Right Answer as the head of the department. Uh, but the big news here is that Dragon Ball is getting his own damn department. So if um, Super doesn't come back, something's gonna come eventually. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, it's probably gonna be something, it's not gonna be called Super, it's probably gonna be called, like, Dragon Ball Ultra or something. It's gonna, gonna, be, a, it's gonna be a sequel series, it's gonna it's follow gonna the called, events. It's gonna be called Dragon Ball Plus Ultra. It's gonna, be edited, it's gonna follow the events of Z, it's gonna finally retcon GT, and all the fans are gonna be like, yay. Yeah. I mean, uh, like, uh, it's gonna be called Super Dragon Z. Ball Next. <laughs> Dragon Ball Next. Dragon Ball Next is not a bad title, actually. Um, ba basically, it's what people are gonna think. Title. It's what people are gonna think, and that's gonna come out, it's gonna be called the... Dragon Ball Switch. Be like, Dragon, the Dragon Ball Switch. Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball for, yes. Dragon Ball for Switch. Dragon, Dragon Ball, Ball for Switch. Dragon Ball the Reignited Trilogy. <laughs> oh, Dragon Ball the Reignited Trilogy. So basically uh, this exam, this, basically this uh, announcement basically just says, hey, more Dragon Ball's coming. Just yeah. be patient. Yeah, just, 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 just don't worry just, about just, it. Don't worry about it. Relax. Watch Kitaro. It's good. You'll Watch like Kitaro it. in the meantime because it actually is very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Don't you patiently worry. watch Dragon Kitaro while you wait for more Dragon Ball. It's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Um. Um. In my hero news. Um, <gasps> oh uh, shit! Like my hero. Um. This is not about the third season. This is about it's, the upcoming. This movie. is about the movie. Um, the stage presentation at Anime Japan 2018 revealed that My Hero Academia, the movie, will open in Japan on August 3rd, so it got delayed a week, but whatever. Um, mm -hmm. The film's title will be, the film's official title will be My Hero Academia, the movie, uh, My, uh, the, the Two Heroes. Um, the event also revealed a new visual, and I'll put it on the screen for you guys. The film, <laughs> it, it's basically, a, it's basically the poster. It's a poster, yeah. The, but the big deal is that you can see Young Might. In oh, there. he Scary looks eyes. weird. We Those Young Might's are... eyes are oh. actually terrifying. Like <laughs> they are wrong. legitimately. It's like the okay, fuel. on a scale of like Nightmare Fuel eyes, um, it goes like Ulterior Battle Angel is near the top. However, this <laughs> overtakes Ulterior Battle Angel because it just looks wrong. Like, somebody fucked up with the sliders when it came to, like, making a creator character and just made the eyes, like, four sizes too big. Yeah. The film will take place overseas on a giant man-made movable city called I Island. Wonderful <laughs> name, guys. Wonderful name, guys. Um, Wonderful. And the film, the film will take place after the final exam or during another summer during the forest training arc, so whether or not it's canon, we don't know. In addition, the film will show the younger days of All Might and there's going to be a brand new uh, character who's a female character, and unlike and like Deku, she will be quirkless, um, uh, which is a, which uh, which means we're going to see more quirkless characters. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so, uh, I am excited for this movie. Um, I think everyone here is excited for this movie. Yep. Yep. Uh, this so is gonna, it, this is. It's gonna be a good old, good old movie. Here's the thing, it's like, if you hear My Hero Movie, you think, okay, this could go one of two ways. This could be either be great or it could be shit. We don't know. <laughs> but then they're like, yeah, Horikoshi's directly involved. It's like, okay, we're fine. We're good. <laughs> the, the genius man himself. Horikoshi. 
is. And also, there was a like there was a little teaser trailer released for the movie. It didn't show much, um, but it showed All Might and Deku on a plane going to the island. And then there's that one shot of Young Might with his demon eyes. <laughs> I'll get you. We'll get you. I'll get used to it. Like it's we not. We won't talk about those scary fucking eyes. <laughs> his horrific eyes. His his horrific, horrific eyes. I can't. Um, I can't look at All Might without him just endoused in like black shadows. It just uh, looks weird. Uh, I I am. You know, there's two two things I want from this movie. Good old uh, my hero my hero academia Sakuga. Because we all know that, uh, yeah. Because that would be great. I want, um, I want some uh, good emotional conversations between Deku and All Might. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I also want, and I also want uh, that uh, that uh, quirkless girl to play. A, I want, I want to know what her deal is. Also, her name is Melissa. Melissa, Do you, does this take place in the states? I don't know. I mean, because because it takes place overseas. I don't mean to be that guy, but uh, Melissa is not a Japanese name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it did, they, they did say it takes place overseas, so it's possibly. Did you know Melissa was the name of the um, opening for Full Metal Alchemist? Yes, it is. Yes, it opening. is. Um, uh, one thing I am... Now, if, it, if, it, if her name is Melissa, here's what I think. As much as I love My Hero, I'll bring this up later, the only issue I've ever had with My Hero is that its world building is not exactly the best. Yeah, um, I mean it's basically uh, just Japan. So. It, yeah, exactly. Um, and I'll I'll bring up my, my I'll bring them more detail because I feel that actually come, there's an actual issue with it that comes along with it. But if we that issue will be mitigated, will be di- like completely been new if we go to America this ep- this movie, which means that we get to see like how the rest of the world you know, treats heroes and all that shit. Like that is what I'm that interested in. Is, yeah. yeah. Like that would be fucking. Cool. It's like how different countries and societies handle the hero dilemma, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or 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 like maybe because it says you know like in, in the beginning like was it eighty percent of the world has quirks eighty percent like 80%. like the world's a pretty big place so there must be like certain places which has a higher concentration of heroes than um like say Japan. What if what if America has more quirkless people because yeah. they have a higher population? They have yeah. like the U.S. House, House has what, how many people? Three hundred million, approximately. So, exactly. So there's going to be a there's bound to be a fuck ton of quirkless people there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Also, I want to mention in that teaser trailer they actually show the island, and it's literally just an island with a giant freaking wall surrounding the whole thing. And I'm like, what is this battle city? It's, it, it what is this, Ma- out, Wall Maria? My Hero, turns out that My Hero Academia is about to do a battle city. What if, um, what if, what if All Might turns into a titan? Uh, then this will be the best movie of all time. Maybe um, it will explain his nightmare eyes. <laughs> That's how he lost his My nightmare God. eyes and turned into a titan. <laughs> Alright, um, but yeah, we're excited for My Hero, mm-hmm. as you can tell. Moving on. Moving on, we have... Moving on... We need to talk about the tragic fate that befell one of the anime that aired this season. I think Shane knows what I'm talking about. Um, I might. Uh, there was an anime that we discussed earlier in the season. It wasn't on our radar. We didn't watch it, but it was called March on Madchen. Mm. Um, uh, and the show, and the show premiered, and everyone was like, "Oh, okay, this is actually pretty decent. It's all, it's, it's all right. It's, it's, it's cute." Turns out that. Um, the show, which is being, which was being done by Hoods or by Hoods Entertainment, was suffering some major major production issues, um, including lack of budget, uh, running over uh, a uh, running over schedule, um, uh, anima- uh, an an- animators not showing up to work. <laughs> oh, um, okay. Um, and uh, and just an overall uh, ambivalence towards the project, and just a what makes l- it worse. What makes it worse is that the guy directing this, this was apparently his passion project. So, man, it's real tough, buddy. Yeah, it just really sucks. So the show, 
ended up being the first anime in, I want to say, near over a decade to be actually cancelled by its network. Um, wow. It was ru- supposed to be running at 12 episodes, but it ended up only going to 10. Um, the tre- 11th and 12th episodes will still be released at some point, we just don't know when. Um, Man, that really sucks, buddy. <laughs> uh, I do believe that I have uh, that Shane has seen clips. Of oh yeah, he sh- he's shown me some uh, he's shown me some snippets of it, and ooh, oh really boy, bad. it's bad. It, it's really bad. Um, uh, and what's the sh- and the shame about it is that it's the perfect exa- is that um, is that uh, <laughs> the show that you, the show that took its broadcasting block. Is fucking Legend of the Galactic Heroes, <laughs> yeah, and rip. I do, which which looks leagues better. <laughs> so, I do find that very very funny, but also very sad. Um, what really sucks about this is that the this was a that the direct this was the director's passion project that he you know really yeah wanted to do this like that really I sucks th- when you like you set your sights on making this one specific thing that you've wanted to make throughout your entire life and you finally get a chance to do so and then everything just kind of falls apart around it yeah your yeah. your freaking your network cancels your show the people that you hired don't show up to work you're not and given enough mon- yeah and the ones that do aren't doing a very good job and you don't have enough money to make everything look work look good and work and you're also don't have enough people working so you go o- over schedule it's like it was doomed from the start, and I really feel bad for the guy. Yeah, the show, the show, um, the show, uh, the first ninth and tenth episodes were actually delayed two weeks in order to uh, fix up the animation quality. But still, the it the still animation, wasn't great. Yeah, no, the final episode, the fi- the episodes we saw, like the clips I showed Shane, that was the improved animation quality. And it was still shite. It was still shite. So who? So whatever, whatever going on behind the scenes is not good. Uh, something's going on, um, and it sucks because this actually happens a lot more in Japan than you'd think. Episodes get rushed out because you gotta get that time slot, you gotta get that good old ad revenue. Um, gotta get, gotta get those Paul. advertisers. Yeah, literally sometimes epi- sometimes uh, shows will literally rush out an episode get the ad revenue to fund the next episode. That's how it works sometimes. Mm-hmm. That really sucks, too. The industry is... The industry sucks sometimes, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it does. Industry like, the, does it, the industry eats animators and shits out anime, and it yeah. doesn't care about anyone's well-being. It really doesn't. Um, speaking of the industry, we have a, a big... Uh, we have a kind of a big industry shake-up. Um, animation oh, Studio A1, yeah, uh, um, oh. not no. A1 Pictures announced on Tuesday that has renamed one of its uh, studi- uh, st- uh, secondary studios. It's going to be called Cloverworks now, um, and it the name is that it's going to be it's, the end of this uh, subsection of the studio is going to be focused on diversifying animation, um, uh, use basically using new animation techniques, new style of. Uh, New an- uh, new animators. Basically, it's going to be focused on new pro- new original projects that Which, are going to push the medium forward. That gets uh, me very excited. Get the uh, freaking Clover- pop team. <laughs> yeah, CloverWorks. Uh, they uh, they, they uh, the part of A One. They're currently working on uh, slow. They worked on Slow Start last season. They are currently working on Darling in the Franks, <gasps> and they're going to be working on Persona Five. Um, um, and A One said that. Uh, uh, they've heard the complaints about Ace Attorney's animation, and then mm. they will put these new guys on Ace Attorney. Um, okay, that's promising, yeah, I, then. I really appreciate that. A1, <laughs> A1's a good company. They've done yeah, a lot A1's of stuff. Yeah, A1's pretty great. And the fact that they're doing this to, like, try and meet the, um... Yeah, what, they're, trying to, the, they're trying to meet trying the to, demands and standards of what people get, expect. They're trying to make their fans happy, which is something I appreciate from any company. They're li- because they're listening, to li- they're listening to their fans, and they're doing what they can to remedy the situation. Yeah. Remember, Shane, I watched all 25 episodes of <laughs> Ace Attorney. <laughs> and really? Did not want- 
to kill myself. So, well, did you? See, you... <laughs> I actually have watched all twenty-five episodes of Ace Attorney. Spencer has watched all twenty-five episodes of Ace Attorney. It's uh. I have two. It's <laughs> not great. <laughs> see, I don't care about the animation. I just liked it because it was bringing back my favorite. Well, my favorite games. Yeah. We've already we've already discussed. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah we've discussed Ace Attorney. Of Ace Attorney in, in detail. So. It's not um, just the animation that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, it's not just the animation. There's a lot of issues with it. But yeah, I'm excited for what A1 does. A1's usually pretty great. Um, I'm excited the, for the future. They're definitely. I think they're the biggest company, animation studio in Japan right now. So they're yeah. definitely. Uh, they're definitely making like a bunch of series. So I'm excited to see what. Uh, what they have in store with this new... Uh, with Hopefully this new, uh, they keep division. giving me that good shit on Darling and the Franks. Um, yeah, Darling and the Franks is good shit. Um, and in our final piece of news... Oh! Uh, we, we have to... D- Darling what? the Franks? Isn't Darling done by Trigger, not A1? Trigger it's A1 a, collab. It's a co-project. Okay, okay. It's a co-project. You can tell which episodes are done by Trigger and which ones are done by A1. Yeah. Um... Because the trigger ones are more insane, while the uh, A one stuff is the more slice of lifey stuff. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Um. Uh. But in um in our final piece of news, we have to discuss this, even though it's a it's not a it's not a good piece of news. Oh, I know um, what this is. Yeah. Uh. uh one of the uh, and in uh, one of, we lost an industry great yesterday. Uh, as we're recording this, we lost an industry great yesterday. Um, Iso Takahata, the uh, one of the founders of Studio Ghibli. Um, the director of such art masterpie- little old masterpieces like Grave of the Fireflies, Only Yesterday, Tale of Princess Kaguya, uh, uh, passed away yesterday. Uh, he was at, uh, at 82 years old. Um, he was uh, and apparently he's been in de- he was in declining health since the summer. Uh, so basically, this was the this was inevitably going to happen. Yeah. Um, and uh, we don't really have to discuss it, but I just want to this epi- uh, that that uh, most of this episode will be for Iso Takahata and the ama- the amazing amazing work that he has done for the industry, not and not, not just the industry, but just animation in general. What he has done is unprecedented, and he mm-hmm. will be sorely missed by everyone in the community. Put a pu- put a. Guys, Put a, know, let's d- take a, a moment of silence for him. Yeah. Alright, there we go. So Takah you know, Takahata, he will be sorely he will be sorely missed and and I will de- and I'll definitely be rewatching Tale of Princess Kaguya. Yeah. Put uh, a um memories of him, that movie put, a, fucking put a dedicated massive. two card at the beginning of this episode for him. Yeah, yeah, I will. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he will. Uh, but yeah, he will be sorely missed. He is. He was. He was one of the best. So. Yeah, creative um, genius. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, straight up, uh, straight up creative genius. Um, uh, which means, which all, uh, and he, he lived. He lived a good life, dude. He lived. He lived mm-hmm. a good fucking life. All right, so. But that's all, and that's all the news we have for this. Cool. For this week. Um, right. and, with, and now, we get to talk about the star of the show. Um, the reason why everyone is here. The reason why we have four people in the podcast. Because Citrus. not because Because not two. <laughs> because even three people is not enough to fully discuss the masterpiece that we're about to discuss. We're going to be discussing... Citrus. <laughs> yes, we're discussing Citrus. No, uh, we're discussing... You know, we're going to be discussing uh, the uh, the act, the shonen, the, the 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 modern shonen masterpiece, My Hero Academia, directed by Kenji Nagasaki and written by Yosuke Kurada from Studio Bones. Uh, season one lasted 13 episodes and aired from April 3rd, 2016 to June 26, 2016. And season two aired for 25 episodes, airing from April 1st, 2017 to September 30th, 2017. Boys, my um, pants are off. I'm ready. Right. So we're gonna be discussing two seasons. We're gonna go one season at a time here. Okay. Um, we're gonna start off with season one of My Hero Academia. Shit. Moving on. <laughs> 
<laughs> season, <laughs> season one of My Hero Academia follows our main character, Izuku Midoriya. In a world where 80% of the population has superpowers, he is one of the only ones who does not. Uh, and But he desperately wants one thing in life. He wants to be a hero like his, like his idol, All Might. One day, he does actually run into his idol, All Might, and in... In a, in a series of circumstances, lends uh, himself to be rec to being recruited essentially by All Might to become his successor, successor passing down his quirk or superpower one for all, t one for all down to uh, down uh, down to Mister uh, Little Little Old Midoriya, Little Midoriya, Broccoli Boy Midoriya, and, young, and Midoriya, Midoriya finally, fi young, young Midoriya, Midoriya finally gets to finally gets to his quirk. And the first season follows him finally going to the to uh, the uh, hero it's high school he's always wanted to, and dealing and and uh, meet, meeting tons of new people, fighting villains, and of course dealing with his impending rivalry with with his uh, fellow classmate Bakugo Katsuki. So, did you mean uh, douchebag Katsuki? Did you mean did you mean explosion murder kill? Did you mean literal piece of shit? <laughs> Did you mean Sasuke Uchiha? Oh, Did you up. mean Vegeta? <laughs> Did you Did you mean Did you mean uh Yeah. The, the, Did you mean uh, Naruto's dad? Did you mean Uru from Bleach? <laughs> Naruto's dad. Wait, Naruto's okay, let's, dad? Let's get on to the act. Naruto's yeah. dad. All I right, can't so. wait to read about Naruto's dad. Haru two in weekly <laughs> oh, show. It's, it's actually Minato. It's actually Minato. Um, Minato no Yeah, Minato. Minato's awesome, by the way. Um, he is a great character. All right, so but um, moving on. Uh, we're gonna do, we're, again same format as before. We're gonna discuss. Uh, we're gonna talk about. Uh, we're gonna go one by one. We're gonna talk about uh, just our basic initial impressions. So let's start with Josh. When you first watched My Hero Academia, the first season, what was your Initial, okay. Thoughts on the show. So, I was. I remember still when it was first airing, and people were always talking about it. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, but I didn't watch up uh, like seasonal stuff then. I just watched old stuff. Mm -hmm. And then last summer, I was like, you know what? Let's fucking watch it. <laughs> and I knew I heard like a lot of great shit about it. I didn't know if I was going to like it or not, but I went in, and the first two episodes... The first one, I felt it was a little slow. Mm -hmm. It was a slow mm. burner, but then after the second episode, the end of the second episode, when Deku goes to save uh, Bakugo, I was like... Oh, yeah. Sh I was like, holy shit! <laughs> holy shit! You and then my, fa like, my face was stuck in like, a holy shit expression throughout the rest of the entire series, because after episode two... It just fucking picks up. It was fucking brilliant. I absolutely loved it, beginning to end. And then I, f I rewatched it. I rewatched it with my friend, because I was like, listen, bitch, watch this shit. And he was like, holy shit, this is amazing. We were just sitting there, both of our faces just fucking, like, wide open, like, oh my god, this is legendary. Listen, you dipshit, watch this right now. Listen, fucker, if you don't watch this, I'll kill you. <laughs> But then, it, it was fucking awesome, man. I loved it. It was okay. pretty awesome. So, Spencer, what was your initial thoughts on My Hero? Um, okay, I think I... Fuck, when did I start watching it? Was it last year? I think it was last year. Yeah. Cause it I was did after not, us. Yeah, I didn't watch it out, oh, as it was airing. Um, actually, I, I think it was like... Four or five episodes into the dub for season two, so yeah. Um, yeah. I ha I watched the first episode, uh, and it lays down, you know, the rules pretty well. Except for the one thing that made me laugh the most was, uh, apparently, uh, if you don't have a certain bone in your foot, you just don't have a quirk. Yep. <laughs> just, just, just don't have a quirk. And, uh... It also gave me one of my favorite gifts of all time of a young Izuku Midoriya slamming his head off a table while holding an All Might yes. doll. Um, 
the greatest but, gif of all time. <laughs> but as it went on, uh... Ooh. Ooh. Oh, Ooh. wow, clearly it bored him to on, tears. As it went on, got progressively more tired, more tired. of the shit. Uh, mm -hmm. No, as it went on, I got more and more of the time in the episodes was spent with a big, stupid smile on my face. Because it just became so much fun. Like, once you met all the side characters and best girl, then you got to, you know, fully get immersed in high school. And as a person who was in university and was in his, what, third year? When this, when I started watching it, I was like, damn. Damn. If this is what high school, well, what my high school was like, I would go back to high school. It, but it wasn't, because my high school kind of sucked. So I didn't. <laughs> so, Shane, what did you personally think of My Hero Season 1? <laughs> I mean... There, there we go. There, that's the most accurate reaction <laughs> like, that anyone could have. I, here's the thing. I could go one of two ways. I could go really into detail about why I love the fuck out of this show, or I could just make an inhuman noise, and that would basically sum up my feelings just as well. That noise you made, like, what, are you out of basic now? Uh. <laughs> but, um... Okay, um... I learned about my hero through a couple of you guys, specifically Matt and Aaron and Alex told me to watch it, and I'm like, yeah, I'll get to it when I get to it. And then when season two was airing, um, I saw a lot of ads for it when I was, um, when I would watch Super on Crunchyroll on Saturdays when I was still a free user. The, 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 the ad for My Hero just played over and over again, and I'm like, I need to watch that at some point. And then I got to it. And, um... Whew. It's, Ooh, it's good. Right. Oh, it's it good. So, it's um, so good. Uh, what is going on? Why is uh, there a dog barking? I'm so confused. Uh, but I, uh, personally, now, when I first when I first watched my hero, I didn't watch it when it first came out. I watched, I think, I watched it like about six months after it finished airing. Mm -hmm. Um, so around December of 2016. Um, I remember, and I remember specifically that um, I didn't watch it at first because I was in a phase where it's like, I don't want to watch Shonen anymore. Um, I was in a phase where I was pretty much tired of it. Um, and, I, and, I, and I was like, I am too matured for that shit. Um, uh, but then I actually watched it, and the only words that came out of my mouth were literally just... The whole time, basically, um, my hero, my hero, blew me the fuck away, um, in every sense of the word, um, even if, even if the first episode was really, really slow. Um, you know what? It's like that for most shonen episodes. So, like first episode, yeah, it has to lay the groundwork. It has to yeah. set things up. Yeah, and I feel uh, that's a problem I have with a lot of shonen, but um. But, um, alright, so, let's get into the real good shit. So, I want, uh, so Shane, um, yes. what was your favorite episode from the first season of My Hero? That's, that's... I was gonna say it's, like, not even, like, there's no competition, but there now I think about some it. Competition. There's some competition. Um... For me... Why. For me, it's between Deku. I heard Funimation. Who did that? Yeah, that's me. I'm just taking a look at the list of episodes. Um, for me, it's a tie between Bakugo versus Deku and All Might versus Nomu. And in the end, I gotta give it to All Might versus Nomu. So episode, episode 12. 12. Because goo, goddamn. <laughs> goo. Like. My Hero is one of those shows where you just start watching it on a whim, and then you realize, oh shit, I've watched the entire season in one day, and you know why. It's because of episode 12, because that, this is, this series is one of the most 
hype series I've ever watched. Yeah. Like every every little facet of this show is just drenched in so much hype and it all comes to a head in episode 12 when All Might faces off against Nomu and we get hype. one of the best scenes in anime that I've seen in a long time the pl- when he plus ultras him into the freaking stratosphere I think, listen, I just think the entire fight like when he's just throwing out a flurry of fists and all you can see is just blurs around his arms like, the animation for that where he's as pushing, you say run plays oh yeah you say run yes mm-hmm. slowly pushing him back then finishing it off with that great plus ultra that fight was just mm, mm. yeah that one episode basically summarizes the, what is everything that's great about my hero. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Spencer, what is your favorite episode of season one of my hero? It's a it 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 was between uh, episode five, what I could do for now, and episode oh no, yeah, or in episode eleven, game over. But I'm gonna have to give it to episode five, what I can do for now, which is the episode where um, uh, Eraserhead gives them their test. Because oh, yeah. because while I could sense a lot of obvious tension during their fight with the League of Villains, because obviously it's the League of Villains, in episode five, if Deku didn't gain control of his powers, or at least kind of learn the the way to use them semi-properly. The, uh, the anime's done in five episodes. The manga's done in, like, 15, 20 chapters. It's over. Deku goes home. He has a quirk now, but he's not going to UA, so he has to find a way to do other things. And and Eraserhead just... It shows off how amazing of a character... Like, okay... You can go to the League of Villains fight, and it'll be uh, amazing, regardless. But in episode five, it shows off all of his all of his classmates and their quirks, and what their quirks are good at, and kind of like the pluses and minuses of all their quir- quir- quirks, as well as showing off just how much of an absolute dick bag Bakugo is. <laughs> A lot of I mean, I think the show that. in general the just gives you a pretty good idea. Yeah, yeah, but episode 5 was the one where, uh, De- you know, when Deku throws the baseball and Bakugo's like, What's your quirk? <laughs> no quirkless loser can be as good as I am! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> yeah, screamy, ep- screamy ep- explosion man just tries ep- to murder everyone. Ep- episode 5 of season 1 is my favorite episode. Josh, what's your favorite episode? Mine is episode between episode four. What was that? Four is the uh, one where they fight the robots. Yeah, no, I, I heard something. Anyways, episode four or five was the two for me, and mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with episode four. Start line. Start line. Yep. yep. At the entrance exam, Izuku falls behind as the other students defeat foe villains left and right. Will he be able to get enough points to pass? Okay. The, 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 the reason why I liked that episode was, like episode 5, if he didn't save Uraraka, mm-hmm. he wouldn't have become a hero. No. It shows that hero- it shows Stain's ideal of what a hero should be, mm-hmm. which is a hero shouldn't do something just for the money, a hero should be someone who tries to save anyone no matter what. And mm-hmm. that sets the groundwork for a lot of Deku's ideal. Or yeah, morals because too. It like sets his groundwork for morals. Yeah, for because like will save someone. Th- yeah, the thing I like that you mentioned Stain because it's it's really Stain's ideals that come up later in season two are actually really um, relevant throughout the entire series. Yeah, because, up, especially even up until esp- now. Yeah, especially the example you gave. It's like, a hero should be selfless above all else. And that episode, when um, mm-hmm. when Deku goes out of his way to save Uraraka, even though he knows that it'll probably end up with him failing 
the entrance exam, he does it anyway because he sees someone in peril and he knows as a hero he needs to save them. So yeah, it really that's shows... Him, yeah. That's what gets him the UA anyways. Just yeah, like and it... Too, because that's why All Might gave him the quirk, is he was like, you have what it takes to be a hero. Every hero starts off without realizing that they're chasing to save someone. But can I also just say, in that episode, it has one of my favorite scenes in the entire series... When when Deku goes all out against the giant robot oh, and he just yeah. he just punches, punches it in the it. face and it's Hell like yeah. it's it's like a super tense like epic action scene where he just decks the giant robot in one hit and then it results in him breaking all his fucking limbs. Yeah, yeah and the it does- damage you see to his hand where it's just like completely eviscerated knuckles. You're like, holy shit. And one thing I will give both the animators and, well, obviously, Horikoshi is that in the world of My Hero Academia, your actions have consequences. Yes. You can only be healed so many times, Deku. So, and if you do not get your powers in order, you will permanently lose your arms or your legs. You're gonna die. <laughs> Like, look how scarred his hands become, hands and arms become in season two. Mm. Especially after the fight with Bakugo, but we'll get into that later. Matthew, my boy, what was your favorite episode? Hmm. Um. You know what? I could go the obvious route and do like one of the fight episodes. I could do one of the episodes for hypes, but instead, I'm gonna go. With episode two, what it takes to be a hero. Mm-hmm. Good, choice. Good, Good choice. Good choice. Good choice. Nice. Yeah. For, for, because personally, one, I have said it multiple times that I think the first episode of My Hero is not the best introduction to the show. No. Nope. Um, um, and episode two, for one, episode two is a massive, massive improvement. Um, but what I really have to go with is that I personally think that this end, that the scene at the end of the episode, at end of episode two, is still the is still my my Hero Academia's best scene they've ever done. I still think that is the best, the scene where uh, ba- uh where All Might tells Deku that he can be a hero is by far the most emotional, uh, gorgeous and mm-hmm. and thematically resonant scene that my hero has done and it's still re- and it remains that to this day mm-hmm. um and it's what and that scene is what made me fall in love with the show um immediately yeah. um just every and plus just the second episode does a great job it shows off it does a great job setting up all might um and his problems it does a great job setting up uh with uh, e- uh it shows off izuku's morals you see you see a lot of um, because in the first episode, Bakugo just kind of seems like a uh, douche, just a generic douche. But then in the second episode, you actually get you, in this episode, you actually get to see some of the hidden layers to Bakugo's character that will slowly be peeled away over the course of thirty-eight episodes. Um, you get this, and you get to see uh, you get to see Deku literally lunge himself at a sludge monster. That's mm-hmm. always fun. I, mm-hmm. I love that scene where I love that scene where Deku just like fucking. Throws the like he, he, no, I love the scene where he he locks eyes with Kachan while he's in the sludge monster. And he's like, without even thinking, he just lunges out of the crowd and rushes yeah. him down. And, and then fucking you say run kicks in. Yeah. It's like, yeah. oh. Uh, the, 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 the episode two is just such a great episode. It's what made me fall in love with the show. It was between that or fuck or episode three, Roaring Muscles. Cause yeah, that episode, that episode is just the fun. training episode. Yeah. Uh, which we all know the training episodes for Sonin are always the good ones. The training uh, episode always... was great because it ended with with uh, All Might Deku screaming, just going, "Okay, now eat my hair." Hey kid, eat this hair. It'll give you superpowers, but don't tell eat nobody. Ah ha 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 we picked all our favorite episodes. Uh, uh, Spencer. Yes. Um, from season one mm-hmm. of My Hero, keep in mind just the development they get in season one. Okay. Who is your favorite character of My Hero? Just the development they get in season one. I will have yeah. to go with... 
Good choice. That, that's actually <laughs> my favorite. Choice. That's actually my favorite hero up to uh, now. Um, uh, let me just quickly re go through uh, what I, you know, remember, and that's uh, Cause some of okay, my okay, I love yeah, the jack shit to do. That, in yeah, one. that goes okay. So yeah, it, it goes up to the All Might Noma fights. Is that okay? In that case, I will have to go with the development. I get. Honestly, it's gonna sound bad, but uh, specifically for one fight, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Deku. Or uh, Deku, Izuka Doria, um, because I have to bring special attention to the fight he has teamed up with Uraraka uh, against oh, the Bakugo fight against Bakugo and Ida. Um, and like I love Ida, he. He starts immediately off as, like, this stickler for the rules, like, overly high-strung, like, You there! Don't talk to that woman! Obviously she's getting herself in the right mind space to this, kid. Mm -hmm. To, like, to, like... J. Michael Tatum is a god. Yeah. <laughs> to, like, being best friends. But the fight with Kachan, where you realize that because he's had no quirk, He's kept detailed journals on every single hero and quirk he, he has ever come across. And using those journals, he has detailed statistics of what everybody's moves will be. Which allows him to, when, Dek, when, Baku, when Kachan goes to punch him, he automatically knows that he starts with a heavy, like, right straight. Oh, yeah. So that means that when Senseko knows that, he knows to dodge and he judo throws Kachan, which only makes him more angry. And it ends with um, him using his quirk, deflecting the blast, and, er and we get to see adorable Uraraka float across the little gap and then hug a giant rocket. And it's just, <laughs> it's adorable, but season one, not a lot of people nope. get a lot, but... Deku gets the most, my dude. Yeah, Deku. Deku's your favorite. Uh, who's your favorite, Josh? Who's your favorite in season one? You know who it is. We all know who it is. Nah, I'm just kidding. Aizawa. Shota! Is it Mineta? It is Shota Aizawa. Aizawa? Shota Aizawa. His quirk? Eraser. <laughs> he can erase the quirks of anyone he's looking at. I like Aizawa. He starts off as a hard ass, except my favorite moment was when he just fucking... He's like, all right, choose your class president and goes to sleep in the middle of a fucking class. <laughs> yep. Just, all right, fuck. He's, just, just, just choose your class president. I'm going to go sleep is, in the corner. I'm going to catch up on my napping. He <laughs> grows in episode five where the reason why he was so hard on the students is he wants them to be the best they are. This yeah. kid. And then, yeah, this kid. And then I think the favorite part was uh, the fight with the fucking villains. He just League kicked. of Villains. Oh, yeah, he was of, his ass. fight against the League of Villains. He kicked ass. He had yeah. his arm destroyed. And what was the villain's name? I'm trying to remember. Um, hands, hand, sure, yeah. Tomura Shigaraki. Tomura Shigaraki. He was about to destroy Suyu and fucking. Aizawa, with his head planted in the ground, his arm destroyed, fucking cancels his quirk. Yeah. In the most badass moment ever. It was just uh, so cool. Uh, yeah, fucking Aizawa is, a, is the boy. Shane, who's your favorite character from season one? You know, I, I was thinking about it. And honestly, I think I'm going to have to agree with Spencer that it's Deku. Honestly, Spencer, Spencer worded it way better than I ever possibly could. Like, specifically using the example of the fight with Kachan, where, you know, because he hasn't had a quirk, he's basically, he basically outsmarts Bakugo, and that gives him the edge. And it's like, it, ju it just shows how intelligent and how resilient Deku is, because nothing will get in his way. Yeah. And I, I also like that episode as an example of the, that's basically the moment where Deku comes into his own as a hero. Yeah. 
Uh-huh. That's, that's where his say. that's where his resolve really pays off, and he st- finally starts becoming confident in himself. Well, Deku is a smart character. We have to remember Bakugo is Bakugo is just as smart. Very, he's just as smart because when he was fighting Deku, he was able to change the trajectory in the air using precise calculations. Yeah, like, he. They're he's, both smart characters. And yeah, also, ba- Bakugo is very smart. In if his we're own talking right. about pure intelligence based off of like. Even you know what? Let's sort of away like like jet basic intelligence. Let's go with with costume design and functionality. Bakugo's Bakugo. costume is the most functional costume. Mm-hmm. It looks stupid. It really does. <laughs> it but does. but because... the ability to store up your your sweat and use it as a giant grenade fireball blast by pulling the pin on your gauntlets is very intelligent, and he uses it. And it's also used in Season 2, but we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. Yeah, we'll get to that. Um, pers- uh, my favorite, now, my favorite character of the series does not get any developmental Season 2, so I can't really say him. But, in Season 1, my favorite character, no, my favorite character is, e- my, ca- my favorite character is easily Uraraka. Mm. Um, easily, no fucking contest. Good choice. Um, oh, Chaco no, or Araka. No goddamn contest here. Um, Is it because she has a nice body, Matt? <laughs> shut the fuck up. No, it's not that. No. That's only partly true. It's Is a- it because of the, the, the skin tight costume? Ill, you can say Ill, it. You can say Ill, it. No. Is it because she's thick with a few Ks? I hate old It's you. C's, not K's, idiot. She's not fat. No, it's fucking K's. Fuck yeah, but when it was... <laughs> one of the thing the thing I love about Uraraka is that even that if you if you take the main four from this season and that's Deku, Bakugo, Ida, and Uraraka. Um, where's All Might in this? All Might. I'm, I'm talking students. Okay. Um, I'm, to- I'm talking students. Uh, Ura- in a, Ura- in a, Ura- out of all out of the main four, Uraraka is the one is the only one of them. One, she's probably the most sane one out of all of them. Um, yeah. Uh, and she's, no, she is, without a doubt, she's the heart of the show. Uh, she, without Uraraka, I really doubt a lot of the show would be as good as it is. Mm-hmm. Because every, because Uraraka's the only character I can think of that plays off of every single one of the, of the main, of the main cast really well. Like, some yeah. characters would not play off really well with each other. Uraraka's the only character of the show who would literally work in every every possible combination. Not only that, but she gets... I think outside of Bakugo and Deku, she gets the most development. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and she has a lot of... She gets... And, no, and, no, and plus, I think her quirk is extremely underrated and underutilized. I think her quirk is... In the right circumstances, her quirk is dangerous. <laughs> Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, we get to see that in season quirk. two. I love her quirk. It's like, hey, if I feel like it, I could touch you, and you could literally float into space. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> she just do. She just do that to Shigaraki. Just touch him and go like, bye bye. Manga <laughs> over. Anime it done. Sh- <laughs> yeah, League of Villains show. defeated. Everyone go home. <laughs> It would end the show. That's probably why Uraraka is not around so much. Pay me twenty uh, bucks. I'll do it. Uh, <laughs> okay, no, but yeah, Uraraka is easily my favorite from season one, um, and she still remains my favorite female character on the show. <coughs> I, I, I love her. I think she's fucking great. She is best Sorry, girl. No, no, no. Uh, no yeah, no. no. Fuck you guys. Actually, no. In the show, she's best girl. I can't no. say anything more. Okay, in the manga, we know who best girl is. We ain't, yeah, we ain't talking about the manga. That's the thing. Cause no, the, you're still wrong. Best girl is Bay Hatsume. No, not true. Shut the fuck up, Spencer. Not true. You're wrong. We are not having Very this true. conversation. Um, I mean, I really like Momo, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> Momo's also good. Momo is up there, yeah, actually. Um, um But, um... Let's talk, uh, but uh, but uh, we go into best girl. Uh, we, we ain't talking about no. Th- that we'll be, they're we'll all be best girl. Hours. We'll be here for hours. Let's not do that. Okay, uh, Josh, who's your least favorite character from My Hero season one? It's Bakugo. obvious. Oh, okay. Well, he's a cunt. 
<laughs> You're Bakugo. I'm Bakugo. He's a I cunt. I mean, he still kind of is in season two, so... Plain and simple. He's a cunt. <laughs> He's a cunt. He is a cunt. He's a okay. dick. Okay, now let's get to the real answer. <laughs> Can that, oh, be, that is my real answer. Can that That's be the like title of a podcast? Go. Just he's a cunt. Oh and no, like, we'll get the we'll get demonetized. <laughs> we'll get we, listen, we're not monetized. We're not monetized to begin, with. To begin listen, with. That's There's exactly no the point. Why I don't like Bakugo. It's strictly because he's a cunt. <laughs> Just, he's okay. A, I okay. first saw him and I was like, this guy's a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this guy. I was like, I thought Sasuke was bad. This guy's even fucking worse. And now here, two years later, I still think... At least Sasuke has respect for people. Can can we just have a counter for how many times Bunrit has said the word cunt in this entire rant? You mean the C C counter? The cunt counter. The cunt counter, or CC for short. Not until the manga does Bakugo actually get to be a good character. Alright, alright. Shane, who's your least favorite character in the show? Okay, well, the real answer is obviously Mineta. I mean, come (laughs) on. Um, excuse me, I relate with Mineta. That's a bad <laughs> thing to that relate to, That says a lot about you, Ren. then. <laughs> I don't care! I'm not I letting you anywhere girl. near women. <laughs> I see a hot girl, I'm like, damn, I feel you, Mineta. <laughs> Let me touch her with my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Let true? me just touch her with my balls. You know, here's the thing. Now we're demonetized. Uh, I was gonna say someone else, but I have to agree with Shane, Mineta is the It's best fucking best. Man- it's Mineta! <laughs> Please, yeah. <laughs> Spencer, who's yours? I have I right? have a question though. Is the what? scene with the shower is that in season one or season two? With season Mineta. Two. Season two. Okay. Season two. Then in that case, it's Bakugo. Because Thank you. Because he's a cunt. No, no. <laughs> because this is supposed to be a hero academy, right? For heroes, for good people. And Bakugo and every, literally and tells <laughs> Mineta to uh, it's not Mineta, and literally tells Midoriya to fucking kill himself. <laughs> and everyone looks at him and like, yeah, this guy deserves to be in the hero program. Not even that. All the class agrees with him. They're like, yeah, yeah. Midoriya, fucking kill yourself. And they want to be the heroes. Roof. Go follow your notebook out the window yeah. and die. He explodes his notebook. He tells Midoriya to kill himself. He constantly yells. He almost murders Midoriya in the fucking battle. Um, that was also kind of All Might's fault, though. Yeah, for not yeah, stopping All Might, it, All Might didn't but, stop like, it, so... But even then, Bakugo in Season 1, in Season 2, and in most of the goddamn manga, is an absolute fucking cunt. And well, do you remember what his hero name is, Spencer? King Explosion King Murder. King Explosion Murder. Death. No, it's Murder. Or is it King Murder King or Death? King Explosion Murder. King Explosion Murder the hell it was is. one of the names he wanted. It, and it's it's... It's like, it's like, yes, Mineta is a pervert. He's a massive pervert. However, he doesn't actively tell women that he's going to assault them or tell people to kill themselves. No, he just does it. He just... <laughs> excuse no, he me, just he attempts to do it. it. He thinks about doing it. There was an attempt, Your Honor. But Mineta no. Is, Mineta's Min- garbage. <laughs> but no. Bakugo, in my opinion, is the worst person Thank in you. season one. Thank you. As a, you know what? I wonder why I like Mineta, though. He reminds me of Issei from DD. Moving on. Yeah, let's just stop talking about edgies. Anyways, Matt, what's your least favorite character? He already fucking said. Mineta, fucking Mineta. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, fucking, my, my problem with Mineta is not the, his character himself. Is that I actually think that the idea, like, Mineta has some funny moments here and there. I actually think he has some really funny moments here and there. My problem with Mineta is that he's so tonally out of place. Oh, he's <laughs> like he, not a good hero whatsoever. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll fight, I'll fight, yeah, I'll argue. Um, even then, I'll argue, his I'll argue, I think Mineta improves in Season 2. In Season 2, he improves immensely. Fight. His, he still the worst character. His, sti- his sticky balls are actually helpful. He has he in has, one. Okay, listen. He has the potential. He just doesn't act on it. How's that? Well, think about Ray it. Great brush. We'll, we'll, Ray brush. We'll get to that in season two when we get into his actual reasons for being a hero. But 
Anyways, carry on. In the first season, in the no, first no, season, in the first season, in Mineta is just kind of to feel he feels totally out of place, especially during the USJ attacks. Like he just like just, it's, at times I just wanted to look at him and tell, yell at him, and tell him to shut the fuck up. Oh no, he's a pussy during the USJ attacks. <laughs> just like shut the fuck up. Mm -hmm. um, especially considering that he was with Sue the whole time, who Sue is one of the best characters in the fucking show. Best girl. So and then gropes frog boobies. <laughs> I, I, I mean, she, technically I speaking, is not... technically speaking, they're human boobies, but with a frog power. <laughs> We're not having this discussion. Listen, we are not. <laughs> We're not having this discussion. All right. So, um, any other uh, things you want to like talk about? Any other uh, overall score for season one? No, uh, we're not doing overall. Like, any like any other like nitpicks stuff and next? criticisms? Yeah, nitpicks and criticisms. Yes, any, going uh, season uh, one of my hero is not perfect, and I have some issues. Going off of so. what Matt kind of alluded to, um, the world building in my hero, even up to really now, it's one of the few problems I, just, I have. It's it, it's not good. Like the uh, first episode goes, yeah. So, one child was born that, like, glowed like a fucking flashlight, and then all of a sudden quirks <laughs> happened, and anyways, we're in Japan. 80% yeah. of the world population has inherited some sort of quirk. Let's stick to one specific country Let's that isn't to even an the biggest island. country. And, and apparently, all of the top ten, he top five heroes are all Japanese. Who wow. the funk in the world? In the world, yeah. apparently, yeah. the all Japanese. How ironic that best so that best genius is somehow a better hero than some person in America who, for all we know, has the ability to become a nuclear bomb. I mean, let's. I mean, let's be real, guys. Best genus, better than all my Best genus confirmed. Is my guy, though. Best genus is awesome. Best genus turns Bakugo into a gentleman and a He turns Bakugo. Bakugo into a boy band member. Yeah, he really does. And so. it's great. I was crying, that was fucking great. I also um, I I also just one not nitpick or criticism, but one kind of fun thing is that I like the idea that um uh we're gonna go into a bit of a, a, a a fan theory, but it's a fan theory that I thoroughly enjoy, and it's the idea that uh, that uh, Kachon actually isn't angry all the time. He just forces himself to be angry because it makes him sweat more. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah, it makes sense. Although to be fair, I think in the early episodes he was just he's also no just time he's just Deku actually exists. a cunt. Yeah, he's just angry yeah. that that Deku is breathing still. He's just actually a massive cunt. Thank you. I mean, De I mean, I mean, De I mean, Mineta's still worse, so. No, no, no. I didn't put Dead Baku because I also think Baku is a really raw ring character, so that's why I can't put him there. Um, but, uh, one of the things that I. The, the, one of the main issues I have with Season 1, um, is that it. Not. Is that outside of the first episode being slow as balls, um. And balls are slow. Balls are slow. Mm -hmm. My big issue with Season 1 is that. For all intents and purposes, it's really small. Yeah. Yeah. And it feels small. Like, it shouldn't... F like, a show can be small, but not feel small, if that makes any sense. Like, you can you can make it feel big and make it feel important. They Season just, 1 feels small. They really and, condense the arcs. Yeah, it feels really small. And uh, you watch it, and you're like, okay, this is really good. But it never really lives up to its full potential. That's for what the later seasons are for, yeah. But when season one was airing, we didn't know that it was going to get season two. Oh, yeah. So it feels really small and really self-contained. And, like, not it, it feels self-contained, but it doesn't feel like... The stakes aren't high enough. Yeah. There's a stake problem. Um, thankfully, like that... Problem is no longer exists in my game. The attack so on USJ, like, especially the attack on USJ, in my opinion, just came out of nowhere. It did. It really did. To be they fair, were, though, it did come out of nowhere in universe as well. So it makes yeah. sense. Yeah. The um, villains that, were just like, "Hey, we have a good opportunity to attack. Let's just do it." Yeah. And to be fair, that's very reminiscent of Golden Age, Silver Age comics, where like yeah. stuff would just happen. Catch them by surprise. Nowhere. Yeah, basically. So I and I love and. Uh, that's, I was gonna mention that I one thing I love about my hero is that my hero is the most golden age 
esque <laughs> comic thing that's existed in a while. I love Golden Age comics, like old '60s classic comics, more so than modern comics. So this is uh, this show is very much inspired by that vein, mm-hmm. and I love it. And I love it. Black Panther sucks. My hero's better. I, you know, I, I don't know which one's actually better. Than that. Star Wars Episode One is the best. Star Black Wars Panther's movie. better than Season One of My Hero. I know that for sure. Um, Call of Duty World War Two is the greatest game to be made. My ass. School Days is the best anime to ever be produced. The scene with the bow is revolutionary in the medium. The scene with the- but yeah, uh, is, is everyone pretty much uh, talked about yeah. Black Hero Season 1 enough? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. let's get to the good shit. To say, I have one last thing to say. What's, what's the last thing? Okay, yeah, okay, what's your final score? Shane, what is your final score for Season for season 1? I will, <clears throat> I will admit that Season 1 does have its fair share of problems. Pacing slow in the beginning, world building, like you said, when you think about it, is actually kind of poo- <laughs> um, it do- it doesn't really have the the spectacle that it should, but overall, it is still an extremely enjoyable season of shonen anime. One of the best mm-hmm. in recent memory. I it it gets an easy nine out of ten. If it wasn't for the pacing issues in the beginning, it would probably be a ten out of ten. But mm-hmm. yeah. that kind of holds it back. All right, Spencer. Shit. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I've, shit out of ten. <laughs> shit out of ten. Worst anime I've ever seen. Uh, I don't even know why I'm on this episode of The Gap. Uh, Jump off the roof, Deku. I guess I'm gonna go Bakugo myself. <laughs> oh. He's As become a to verb explode. now. It, it, yes, I'm gonna go become a cunt to a person and tell them I want to be a hero, but so go <laughs> kill yourself, nerd. Um, I, I'm trying to stall for time because I'm trying to get my anime list up because I think I gave it an 8, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, well, I, I got my score right now. What, yeah, Josh, what is your score? Yeah, you go. 9 out of 10, frog titties. 9 out of 10? 9 out of 10 for frog tits. <sighs> That's illegal. She's underage, creep. She's you fucking underage. Mineta. She's underage. So is Momo, Shane. It's <laughs> hey, so is Uraraka, bitch. Shut up. I so no you. one here is perfect. We are. I officially hand in my resignation for the gap. <laughs> I officially hand in my resignation. It's been fun, guys. Hey, notice. Matt, you want to become, like, you want to let me become the co-host? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking two weeks notice from the start. If you take my spot, I will end you. <laughs> I will take your spot, Yeah, father. yeah, okay, 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 I got it, I got it, I got it, okay, okay. KKK, you racist piece of shit. KKK, KKK out of 10. 10. <laughs> uh, yeah, I did give it an 8. Um, it has its problems. The first episode is slow. The whole kind of start up, really until, like, the USJ attack is, is relatively, like... It's interesting, but it's not super interesting. Hey, guys. Uh, however, the animated music and characters as a whole deserve to get fuck tons of respect. That's why I gave it a... Oh, never mind. Give it a 9 10. I know why it's an 8 out of 10. Hey, guys, I know why it's an 8 out of 10. Flip an 8 on its side, and what does it look like? Infinity. Fuck's sake, man! You know what I was trying to go for. Uh, fucking, uh, my, yeah, my score is a 9 out of 10 as well. I think 9 out of 10, my, yeah. It's a, it's a 9 out of 10. It's not perfect, not perfect, but the stuff it does well, it does so... Yeah. So well. And yeah. I, now let's get into the perfect stuff. <laughs> now let's get into like the the really good stuff. Time for season two. Season two of My Hero picks up where my, uh, where season one left off. Uh, in in my in the you now in second season it fall you know it follows uh, the continuing adventures of Midoriya, Bakugo, Uraraka, Ida, and now and, and now a new member Todoroki as they and as they make their as they make their way through uh, as they make their way through UA at school through the sports festival to the events with Stain to their final exams it's always it's a major major uh, development period for them and uh, it's fucking great <laughs> uh, Shane what are your what were your thoughts on season two of my hero? 
Season 2 is yeah. superior to Season 1 in almost every single way. It, That's it's, literally it. Yes. It, it's basically the first season, but even even better. It's basically, it's basically the, first, the season first season on crack. On cocaine. <laughs> it's... <laughs> on meth. On heroin. Yes. On um, marijuana! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Alright, no, but, uh, uh, uh Spencer, it is better in every single conceivable way. way. Um, actually, um, I think the OVA with Sue's family was the best season. Just saying. Get out. <laughs> That's not a season, Josh. Shut the fuck up, man. It is in my heart. Not when you watch it 13 times in a row, then it is a season. Uh, fucking Josh, what were your thoughts on season two? My thoughts on season two? Yeah. Fucking brilliant. <laughs> fucking brilliant. Yeah, I think Once that's again, a... um, I watched it with a guy that I said, uh, watch it, bitch, for season one, and we both fucking couldn't stop yeah. smiling. Like, literally, literally, season two I, is everything okay. that season one did, just amplified to perfection. Listen, like, it gave characters, me, animation, pacing, all that shit. Season two gave me Bay Hot to Bay. <laughs> I am grateful every day for it. Yeah, we know that. We know I give my I give my blessings to the anime waifu gods. Yeah. We know, Amen. Uh, we know, uh, we know, Can we uh, kick fucking, Josh uh, from the chat? Is... <laughs> what was that? What was that? Oh, nothing. My preference in what? Gas. Who's his garbage? Apparently. <gasps> <gasps> um, excuse me, <laughs> Mister. Oh, I like Oscar. Also, oh, also, why are you going after Matthew? It was Listen fucking Shane that said that. Bitch. said that. What the hell? <laughs> well, then well, I'll go, I will after, go father. after father You're because wife father is father. Trash, I don't talk shit on him. He has no. Except he has. On. He has no choice but to respect me. <laughs> All girls are best girls respect in my, my hero. Um, okay, Except so, for yes. Naraka, okay, she can just gonna... go fuck off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can we kick him? <laughs> Alright, alright, alright. Oh god, this is this is actually like infinitely more difficult. My hero. Because I know there's only Everyone one right answer, but all the episodes right are really answer. fucking good. <laughs> right okay. Even even the one even the one anime two. only episode, which was the internship episode, was actually really good. Selkie is b fucking adorable yeah, and I wanna Selkie. hug her. But uh, honestly, I know I know you guys are thinking I'm going to say see episode ten. Um, however, it's not episode ten. No. What the fuck's wrong with it? Is episode well, then that means your opinion's wrong. Seventeen. Climax. The fight against Stain comes to an end as the heroes fight the Nomus. Stain. Climax. No, no, okay. allow me to explain. Yeah, Spencer, right. you're wrong. <laughs> you know, allow no, me no, to explain I'll why I list. think that, that this is better down. than episode that's a good 10. One. That's really okay? good. It's very close. It's very cl That's fine. You, you could ignore it. Most I mean, people do. It's very close. It, but... <laughs> However, it all comes down to tone and stakes. Episode 10, you have. They're all going to talk about it, because they all love it. Um, so they'll explain it better, but basically it's during the sports festival. Episode 17, you deal with the villain that Shane has already mentioned, Stain. Which is honestly one of my favorite villains they've ever done in this entire series. D distinctly because... Best villain he's in a the murderer. series, bar none. Okay, yeah. he's a bad person. However, his, his reasoning is not. His reasonings is sound. Like, like if you sound. go based off, off of his reasonings, he would hate Uraraka 
Because really, Uraraka's reasoning for becoming a hero, aside from like really helping people, is money. She wants to get rich, so she can help her parents. Yes, but it's money. She wants to get rich. Stain comes out here, destroys everything, like a force of nature. Doesn't kill, but basically shelves um, Ida's brother like forever. His heroing career is over. He'll never be able to walk again. And then Ida gets some really good <coughs> fuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he gets oh, some really sorry. good fuck. Ida gets okay. some really good um, character Bay development, Hatsume. and this is when we get to see the the culmination of Deku's training to control one for all, as well. Yes, Full Cowl gets introduced, Full cowl. as well as um, the brilliance that was the Recipro Burst, Full Cowl, Todoroki's fucking dope-ass super combo on Stain that leads to, I think it's in the next episode, where, it's either in the next episode, okay, and it's episode 17, no, this, which has Stain basically of, state that, well, I might die and I might be gone, my words will spread forever and you will forever be known as a as a villain in my eyes, and he just it's done. And hell, hell, we wouldn't oh, have most of the villains that we up. have if it wasn't for Stain. Oh, yeah. Episode 17 is the best episode of season 2. Yeah, yeah. Alright, so, um, Shane... So everyone Josh, else give the right answer. <laughs> so, uh, so, um, so, uh, so Shane, Josh... Okay, mine um, is... We all know what it is. Now, do you? If you give a curveball just for the sake of it, I swear to God. Oh, I actually am going to give a curveball. I'm just trying to find what episode it is. You know what, Josh? What yeah, is your there it is. Episode? Ready? What is it? Episode 14. Bizarre. Gran Torino appears. Yep, 14. Huh. Episode 14? Yeah. Now, nope. do you know why that's my favorite episode in season 2? It's when Deku finally... <laughs> it's when Deku finally breaks away from All Might. And he becomes it himself. Yeah, his because again, style, full his fighting, cowl. His fighting style becomes his own. You get Gran Torino, who's a fucking badass, but Deck badass little midget Deck man finally learns that the reason why he wasn't able to do what he could is he was trying to imitate All Might this whole time. Yeah. And then he finally realizes that wait, I'm my own person. This is my quirk now. I have to do it the way I want it. And he does, and he gets full cowling. Like, listen, episode ten and seventeen. Are masterpieces for their fights and story elements, but episode 14 lays groundwork for Deku for being his own hero. Just like with the fight mm -hmm. against Bakugo, Deku becomes his own again. And that's you know what? what. Yeah, like I didn't just do it, do it as a curveball. Like it has sound reasoning for why I chose that You know episode. what? You know what? I respect you. I respect it. I respect I will you. respect your opinion even though it is the wrong one. All right, Shane. Uh, we all know... Yeah, sh uh, Shane. Everyone uh, knows what our picks are. It's yeah, episode know, goddamn know. 10. Shota Todoroki. Uh, it's or it uh, Yeah, it's episode 10. <laughs> Shota! Mm -hmm. like, it's your quirk, not his! <sighs> Show Have you them. finally accepted your purpose? Now, go! Show them your fire! Dude, okay. I just want to say... Everything about this no, episode. No, 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 before we get talk about episode 10... Oh, uh, that was the last episode. episode. Okay, that's it. Five is yeah, Encounter. Um, yep. Yeah. Encounter. That was in the, uh, in, the, in the outlet mall with Shigaraki. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Easily close episode. second. Easy good close second. Yes, um, good episode. Uh, but, um... Um, you know, episode 10 is easily one of the greatest pieces of animation ever put to screen, and anyone who's wrong, anyone who says otherwise is wrong, 
And, um... Um, actually, I think, um, Naruto versus Sasuke was the greatest one ever. So you know, that's actually a close answer. That is a great, lie. that is a close that, one. That is, that, that is, a, that is also a correct answer, though, so you I think, on that. actually, the ostrich versus Sasuke <laughs> and Naruto is that the is also greatest. A cor- that's also a correct answer. <laughs> the best episode. <laughs> because flying ostrich dragon kick. But legit, though... Legit though, the Sasuke versus Naruto fight is pretty close to the oh, deck. No, yeah, no, yeah, you're, you're not wrong, man. It's actually that's actually really close. Don't but forget, was, yeah, don't forget Kakashi are... versus uh, Obito. Oh yeah, Kakashi versus Obito was another. Oh, mm. yeah, that was so good. Mm. But no. Anyway, back to Deku. topic. Episode Todoroki ten is a freaking masterpiece. Absolutely, <laughs> not just listen, not just animation wise, but story wise too. Storytelling, character development. Backstory, emotion, resonating themes, everything. Pure badass of you. Mm-hmm. All into this just one fucking brilliant mm-hmm. episode. Yeah, I also like how Izuku loses. Yes. That's yes. my favorite Midoriya, part of Midoriya sucks. Yeah, I expected... I ex- <laughs> Midoriya listen, sucks. I expected Deku to win the whole tournament. I went in like, oh, it's a tournament arc. It's a shonen tournament arc. Main character. That, yeah, but see, that, that's, that's an example, example of good writing because that, it subverts that's your right. expectations. Sorry, sorry, exactly. Like, that's when an example Deku... of just my hero as a whole. It constantly subverts the modern shonen trump, uh, tropes and makes it its own. Yes. Yes. When what Deku the... <laughs> lost, I was like, wait, 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 wait. What? Yeah. I was confused. I, mean, I, I never thought that Deku was going to win the sports festival, just because, like, that's the obvious choice. And anything, it, it, my hero is anything but obvious. Yeah. yeah. But one thing I loved about one thing I loved about the episode was that the fact that Izuku lost, but it didn't feel like a loss. If anything, Todoroki lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, it was a physical loss, not an emotional loss. It was a physical loss on Deku, but Deku won. Deku won that fight because emotionally, Deku won. He got Todoroki to do what... Uh, he cracked what, Todoroki's shell. Todoroki, and affected Todoroki. It, honestly, if it wasn't for the... On, honestly, Todoroki could have still win, won that fight. Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, won that fight, but it was literally because Deku pushed him. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what affected him later on when he fought Bakugo. I mean, Toroki was still like shook. He was shook. He was mm-hmm. very shook. So he, so that's what that. So that's why um, Toroki was like, I, I, I don't think, know what to do. So I mean, Bakugo I, I think uh, Runner <laughs> said it, but I just blew him up. Really, be boiled down to one quote, and it's honestly one of my favorite quotes in the entirety of. Uh, my Academia, which is it's your quirk, not his, because it's it's Midoriya saying to Todoroki, yeah. and it shows characterization for both characters in which Todoroki sees his half hot, his fireside, as this curse that he refuses to use it because that would be in his mind being no better than his father, and he hates his father, and it shows and it shows Midoriya yeah. as you know this. This this all might style like symbol of like peace and justice and like like kindness and compassion and he's trying to get Todoroki not to necessarily use his fireside because you know he wants a challenge but he wants Todoroki to realize that exactly what he states the fire this is your quirk not your father's you are not your father you are your own person and in doing so it becomes one of the most emotional scenes that's that. The re- that resonates throughout the entire rest of the anime and manga, in which Todoroki as a character changes from that episode forward. He does it, he does a complete one eighty in yeah, terms of character, total, and, and it also that scene the, the entire episode oh, it just shows that, again also that last that last one minute of soccer guy is just like yeah. oh. yes. <laughs> but no that 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 scene in particular it again just shows how completely selfless deku is like he will put everyone else before him because that's how he feels he can be the best mm-hmm. hero it's, yep. it's 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 an incredible episode now moving on what I can is, who, uh, I can finally Spencer, say it. No, I can finally say it because he got a lot more characterization this uh, season. 
But, uh, we call me Tokoyami. Now, allow me to explain why Tokoyami is my favorite character, yeah. and honestly, to this day, still is, after what's happened in the manga. So, in the beginning, all you know about Tokoyami is he's this kind of, like, he has a, he's body of a man, head of a bird, he's a bird boy, who, who he's is a, kind, who's, he's a like, fucking bird boy. kind of, <laughs> bird like, boy. like, moody, and, and edgy, and dark. He, and and yeah he's yeah a, his work is character. uh dark shadow <laughs> which is basically a stand um however in the first season i saw you know is okay he's a bird boy he has a uh dark shadow inside of him uh whatever he's you know he doesn't really play that much he's kind of a side character I don't he's think I will ever use any other term to describe Tokoyami so other much. than so bird So he's on Team Deku. Yeah, then in season two, um, he actually, for the uh, he gets for the yes. So he gets for the he's, sports he's festival. The he's on Team Deku, this, this and basically, since Deku gets first place in the race, his headband is worth a million points, and the whole part of that is is trying to like is everybody's focused on you know trying to get. Um, De uh, De De Deku's headband. It also introduces my second favorite character, Monoma. Um, second, yeah, because uh, yeah, we'll um, get to Monoma in a second. We'll get to Monoma. Uh, but you want to talk about who's a end, fucking cunt? To um, <laughs> Deku is absolutely just dis dis distraught that somebody got his headband. But it turns to Tokoyami, and he's like, his dark shadow grabbed a couple of headbands, and it shows that not only does Tokoyami have his own personality, but Dark Shadow does as well. And throughout the singles matches where he single-handedly absolutely destroys Momo. And this is a woman that, that got into the hero class through recommendation. Like, she's supposed to be... <laughs> for what, a murder? Like, like let's straight up. Hello, Momo's 911, this, I would like, like to report a murder. Like, overpowered beast god. And... Because of characterization, which is explained in the exam arc, where everybody kind of has to get o he has to get used to like their own style. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tokoyami can easily defeat her because, you know, like because of Dark Shadow. And his next fight, he's trounced by Bakugo because we learned that Dark Shadow doesn't do well in light, almost like how an actual shadow works. So we, so we learn in this season alone so much about Tokoyami that he's that he becomes aside from just a bird boy, he becomes a genuine personal character that only becomes better in the manga. With Sue, where I ship and don't it. Don't forget about I his final it. exam with Sue. I'm shipping it right now, boys. <laughs> Alright, um, it's Josh. Who's your I favorite wonder who it is. Two? Although, we may know who it is. But, uh... My favorite character! My favorite character! Denki Kaminari! Cork mm. Electrification! <laughs> I like Denki. He doesn't get a lot of screen- Listen, he doesn't get a lot of screen time. He has more than season one, though. Oh, definitely more than season one. He's just a funny character. Oh, he's I a love great. He's a great supporting cast. He's got an awesome Cork that's- Surprisingly powerful. <laughs> Except it gets that. Plant Except for when he fries himself. <laughs> Except for when he fries him. Yeah, that's the most. He's just a fun character. He's a fun character. Edit Apart that out. From that, if it wasn't De if it wasn't Denki and he wasn't there, I'd say best girl Bay Hatsube. Bay Hatsube. Voiced right. by one of my favorite voice actors, Alexis Tipton. Oh, Alexis Tipton. Yep. Her, uh, her fight with Ida was just fucking. It was just her sales pitch. It was a sales pitch. Time. It was a fucking sales pitch. I love. I love how. I love how Ida just got fed up with everything. Yep. Um. All right, Shane. Who's your favorite character from season two? I want to hear yours first, just so uh, I can see. Yeah. You know, uh, 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 easily, Shoto Todoroki. Um. No. No hands. Defense. Fucking down. Um. For getting literally an entire arc basically devoted to him. 
Um, he basically bec he becomes part of the main cast this season, and he is easily one of the most interesting, complex, and well-developed characters on the show. And he only is he's only just started his development. And too. I cry for him every time. <laughs> yeah, uh, he is easily my favorite character. Um, it, uh, he's one of my favorite characters. I think overall, my favorite character in the manga is probably either him, Tokoyami, or fucking. Or, uh, or, yeah, or, she is. She's shown yeah, at the end of the season two. Talk about it, Toga. Um, Ooh, Toga. Yeah, so Toga counts. Um, so Toga, but I think that overall Todoroki is the best character in season two for the, just the amount of development he gets, and the and the uh, and the and the amount of screen time he has. Like he's just a great character in general. This um, season is Todoroki's time is Todoroki, to shine. It, is Todoroki's it might as well be called My Todoroki of Academia, right or My Hero yeah. Todoroki. I'd... My Hero Todoroki, there we go. My, My Hero Todoroki. Yeah. Shoto, yeah. I was... Shoto Academy. <laughs> He's all, no. yeah, also, uh, Todoroki's also my husband from the show, so that's... Oh, yeah. That, that yeah, 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 yeah. Like, but, um... No, Shame. that's why that's why I wanted to hear your answer first because I was debating mm. between Todoroki and Stain because Stain as a villain just works in every way conceivable way, but and yeah, your, Todoroki hands down. Your Todoroki, yeah, Todoroki right. hands down. Uh, Todoroki. All right, now uh, Shane. Let's see who the wrong answer the is. Same choice. Who's your least favorite character from season two? Mineta. Moving on. <laughs> Oh yeah, I know mine. Shane, what's your Manetta? Moving on. <laughs> Manetta, Manetta. Let's again? see Matt's. Mm -hmm. Let's see Matt's I just don't wrong like choice. <laughs> I mean, makes sense. I know, I know who he's gonna pick, and it's it, the it's the right choice. But I just have my bias. Uh, no, I'm gonna go with Josh. Who's your favorite? Who's your least favorite? No, who's Matt. Your who's your favorite? who's your least favorite? No, 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 no. We're taking mine for last. It's Josh, who's Fine. your least favorite? Bakugo! He's a cunt! Still! <laughs> he was a cunt in season one! He was a cunt in season two! <laughs> Fuck him! Why be a cunt in season three? LOL, no. Um. Most likely. Cut a little bit. <laughs> Changing from Bakugo. Um, um, Spencer, who's your least favorite character? I got fed up with this character in season two. His his reasoning for being a hero oh, no is dumb, but also semi um, understandable. Uh, spying on women isn't a good thing, and mm. the man who mm. lost tw the like twenty five places in the popularity polls in Japan is the grape juice pervert himself, Mineta. He becomes so fucking annoying <laughs> and insipid throughout this entire season that I'm just like, will you shut your vapid mouth? Everything you say makes Holy me angry. shit, Spencer! I hate Spencer Mineta. I still hate me Mineta. Every time that, that in the manga he gets shit roasted and just destroyed, I laugh Internally, externally, and in surround sound. At the page, in his face. And the worst part of I mean, the game is that is like... That says a lot face. about Kohei Rikoshi. Well, <laughs> that says a lot about him, then. <laughs> Kohei Literally, Kohei Mineta says he just likes draw. He said he said he's fun to draw, and he likes like he likes people shitting on Mineta. So. Literally, literally, Mineta is the worst character in this entire series. Fuck you know, guys. Mineta was supposed to be a uh, uh, you know, but you know, Mineta was one of the first characters he came up with too. We need to exile him. No, I uh, like Mineta. No, you know, I would I would go Mineta. I would go with Mineta. We know what you're gonna pick, but. I have to go with this character because the honestly, best character I hate him in from the manga one too because he just doesn't no. fuck up, and that's Monoma. No, Monoma is the best character in no. class one B, and hell, please. one of the yes. best characters in my hero. Spencer, no, Spencer, no. shut Matt, the fuck we, up. Monoma's can we kick a cunt. him from the chat? Don't say Kendo. No, 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 no. The best character in class one B is either Kendo. Tetsu, Tetsu, Tetsu. 
It's either Kendo or, or tetsu, easily tetsu. Tetsu, 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 tetsu. Well, joke's on you, Class 1A. What iron, losers iron, like iron, you iron. failed your exams? <laughs> Yeah, Monoma's a cunt. Monoma, I want to kill him. <laughs> Monoma annoys me. Every time... No, Monoma's annoyed. The only time he did not annoy me was during his first appearance. Because then I was like, okay, 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 he's kind of a dick, but maybe that'll be his... you have a character development. Like, oh, he'll learn to respect 1A over the course of the sports festival. I L mean... L no. He's <laughs> but think about... Okay, because now, <laughs> now we... Now we... we, we, we we need to get in something serious about my hero for a second, okay? We just, need to, we just need to take a second, sit back, relax, and realize how the fuck did some of these people pass the fucking entrance exam? I mean, I can understand Monoma because his quirk is dope, <laughs> in which he can copy other people's quirks, and I can understand, like, a lot of them, but just for a second, how the fuck did people, like, fucking cock a goody get into goddamn my hero academia school because she's invisible what did she do trip the robots yeah to yeah toru. To toru. Oh, toru. i'm sorry but we can't we can't confirm that you actually destroy those robots well shit but you also you're can't right. deny that i didn't destroy the robots shit you right no, all you need to know is that how the fuck did Mineta get into the fucking hero class 1A? Okay, wait, 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 hush, hush, I actually have the manga that explains how he got in as he Gunking up the robots with his sticky balls work. doesn't mean you Let get me into class it. 1A. There's a man who can literally mind control people, and he's in general <laughs> education. Just wait. <laughs> Just wait I was, a I was second. Going I was going to mention if we're if we can bring up any other good characters, can we talk about Shinso? Shinso. The only reason I didn't bring him up is that I feel Shinso gets a lot of Shinso gets a lot of love, but honestly, I like, yeah. I like Shinso, but honestly, he gets way too little screen time for me. Like he's well, yeah, barely, he's very he's, underutilized. I know that he's being set up for a plot later on. I know that Horikoshi said that he's relevant to the stuff that's going to happen. He's coming back, but. He's, he's just got so little screen time here, and yet can everyone he, can, seems to Can he mind control and just gentle? Tell gentle that, to just can, leave? can that be a thing, please? Look. <laughs> just leave. Okay. Leave, okay. The, okay. leave Japan. Get out, Get out of here. Here's the description of how Mineta got in. How the heck Dunking did this guy the pass the entrance exam? Balls. So I thought I'd address that here. As Suzuku said, his quirt's actually quite strong. The goal in the entrance exam was to incapacitate the faux villain robots, so Mineta stuck the balls to the ground and walls, essentially saying traps that would render robots immobile. He also plugged the cannons with the balls. Both of these strategies earned him points. Facing the, points in, facing the opponent head on and chucking them is hardly a winning strategy, though, given how easy it is. Five to ten. To be point pays yeah. Mineta. To be fair, Mineta is in the top ten that. of intelligence in the class. He's like number ten or nine. So. Does make sense. It does I make know. sense. He's not an idiot. So there he goes. Mr. Diaper Great Baby doesn't yeah. act like it though. <laughs> there you go. Didn't go Spencer. forever about this. All right, we're moving on. We're moving on. We're moving on. Um, um, uh, fucking nit any nitpicks and criticisms about season two? No. Mineta, that's season it. Season two is flawless. <laughs> season Mineta. two. Season two is flawless. The end. Um. I have one minor nitpick. It's so minor that it literally does not. It doesn't matter. even matter. Um, I feel, and this is a problem that extends to season one. I forgot to bring up. Um, can the show do more showing instead of telling, please? Yeah. yeah. Can the show learn to shut the fuck up every once in a while? Um, okay, I'll agree with you there. Yeah. So much exposition. Um, there's some episodes, but there's some episodes entirely dedicated to exposition. Mm -hmm. um, um, like the episode where uh, all, where, uh, all Might tells Deku about uh, origins of One for All and All for One and all that stuff. That episode's like half of it is just that explaining that and is just talking. And at times I'm like, okay, this is interesting. You're doing it in a visually interesting way. I like the dynamic between these characters. But, but at the shut same the time, fuck up. But at the same just time, uh, shut up. Show me. <laughs> Yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah, I understand. Okay, you have so this don't villain. Okay, please. But instead of spending <laughs> three episodes talking about the villain, 
show me, show me, let, yeah, let me see the villain, I don't know, kicking a puppy or turning a child into dust. I don't know, one of the two. <laughs> oh, His oh wait, I have one more curdle. thing to talk about. I have one more thing to talk about, I Matt, do, I do, and it's the I most important like the, thing, uh, and I can't believe we haven't talked about it, what? but... I'm waiting! President Mike is... Oh, that's going to be just distorted as fuck, but I don't yes. care. That's going it's to sound shit President on Mike, the audio. Is he one of the best teachers, yes or no? There we go. Yes. Yes. Top yeah. three UA Top teachers. Top five UA teachers. <laughs> Top three UA teachers. I just wanted to get that in because we didn't even mention it. I love Fezzan Mike. Fezzan Mike is the boy. Uh, Alright, so uh, final, <laughs> sc fi fun. final scores. 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, masterpiece. Okay, Josh gives it a 10 out of 10. Spencer? Uh, Shane? 10. <laughs> 10. And yep, I, I also give it a 10 out of 10. So 10 out of 10s across the board. Um, for my hero academia season. This is one of the best seasons of shonen anime to ever be created. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. It's so, so well done, and it's very much worth. It's very much worth your time. If any of, yep. if anyone listening has not seen my hero academia, both watch season it. one and season two, watch it, please, bitch. No, please watch it. We implore you. It's not just a random shonen. It is not now, just some generic Naruto ripoff. It is actually amazing now before we wrap things up can i Maybe. just briefly mention something yes no. now shut up <laughs> i am the host i overrule i overrule you now i've told you guys a lot lately that my sister bones okay. has yes. very much gotten okay. into my hero as of late to the point where she's literally obsessed <laughs> she couldn't be on the show because Matt did ask me if she wanted to be on. She's working, so she can't be here. But I haven't. I literally have a written statement from her about her feelings on my hero. Okay. So if I could briefly recite this to yes. end things off. Do you have ten seconds? Fuck off. <laughs> Bones official statement on My Hero Academia. All Might is a blessing. Broccoli Boy Deku is the best boy, and also his smile can cure cancer. Todoroki is banned, I will fucking fight you about it. Yep. And Endeavor is a living, breathing trash fire who should go die in a ditch. You know, you hear the thing about yeah. Endeavor, I can't say anything, because manga, but, uh... Also, Shinso deserves to be in the hero course, I, I am agree. Boku no fucking trash. <laughs> and, and, and that's it, and that's it. Alright, and, cool. uh, we're gonna start to wrap up here, but we gotta pick Yo. the anime... Featured anime for next episode. And can we? Oh, no, no. It's can I have is this, this week no? Is can I have it's, the honor of? Can I have the honor of doing the random? Shush. Let me. Let, no, I just need clicking to, it. I need to finish let him my finish spiel. his spiel. I just want to click it, man. And uh, we got uh, uh. So for those new to the podcast, we rotate every uh, every podcast. Uh, one podcast. I will, the ep the uh, the featured anime will be chosen by yours truly. Um, but. Every, but it was rotated out with a completely random show on Matt. the randomizer. So, may I suggest something? So, oh no! <laughs> you, so you know how you know how this works. You can pick up the three genres. Or may I suggest genres, or one genre? One genre, genre I think. Per guess. I think the way this should go. That's what I was going to say. I think you know that, that I, you know, you know what I like that. All right. I think so that each of the three of us should pick an individual genre, and then I'm that will go... be the deciding factor. All right. I like that, Spencer. Yes. To what look. genre? Do, I'm, I'm, before we start, I'm going to give a refresher on the genres we got: action, adventure, comedy, drama, etchy, fantasy, game, harem, horror, mecha. Music, mystery, parody, psychological, romance, school, I will go of with life, sports, mystery. And supernatural. Huh. Hmm. Or that, that. Oh, we're gonna get something terrible. <laughs> Josh? Do you even have to ask? Don't I you dare say God. edgy. I you swear to exactly, fuck. you know, edgy boys! Oh no. 
get fucked. We're about to chain. Oh, fuck. What genre? Hmm. Yes. So we have Mystery Etchy, do we? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, no. We... Here's the thing. Now, here's the thing. What we get... We'll yeah. Be... We might not get something that overlaps to all three genres. Mystery so... Etchy. Right. <sighs> we got action, adventure, comedy, drama, fantasy, game, harem, horror, mecha, music, parody, psychological, romance, school, slice of life, sports, and supernatural. Harem! <sighs> oh. We all know what Shane might pick. Yeah, Shane's the Shane wild card. Pick. Shane is like, actually. I'm the wild card here. <laughs> you. What, mm -hmm. what Shane picks will determine kind of what we get, so. I'm contemplating actually picking Harem because Josh just went full in on the trash. So And also we've been doing really see. good with the we need a We've been doing we need something crap. I'm yeah. torn between that or horror, but I feel like if I pick horror I know what we're gonna get. With mis especially with mystery Are horror, good. we might get something. We we we're gonna get shows that Me neither. We, yeah. Um I mean I wouldn't mind that. Do the harem. Do the harem. <laughs> Or Josh could just pick harem, not, uh, you could just pick, like, a third one and pick a third option. <laughs> yeah, I'll pick harem. Yeah, okay. Harem, I'll, 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 I'll do harem. Let's just go full trash here. Okay, mystery, etchy, harem. Oh, no. I what just, have I, I done? I don't like the randomizer. It is randomizer. Well, what have I done? Too. Uh, no, it is, we're going with the one here. Oh, dear what is it? What did you get? What did you get? Oh, it's, oh, it's bad. <laughs> What the did name you... of it? It is a comedy, etchy, heroin, mystery, romance, school anime. Nakaima, my <laughs> sister is among them. What the fuck is that? Yes. <laughs> I've already watched. I don't boys. know what that is. <laughs> Nakaima, my sister is among them. Here is the, dis Here's what? the description. What? Is insanity hereditary? <laughs> Shogo must. <laughs> You guys are gonna hate it so fucking much. Oh no. <laughs> is insanity hereditary? Shogo Mikondo's beginning to think so because the terms of his big father's will seem crazy, and following them may drive Shogo Here, bonkers. Hey, let as me well. give you guys a Let me give a no, description. No, no, no. You know, so it's so. Oh, it sounds sim so simple at first. Before Shogo can claim his very <laughs> He just has to start attending a certain new school and find a nice girl to marry. It's a little unromantic, but perfectly doable, right? After oh. all, the girls seem quite friendly, so all Shogo has to do is find oh, one God. he has something in common with. Except, and here's the kicker, turns out Shogo has way too much in common with one of them because she's actually his long-lost sister. And she has no idea which one it is. <laughs> oh, you guys well, are going to hate it. Will Shogo meet in court as Miss Wright without committing himself to something very morally wrong? Can he find his future bride without slipping into the wrong set of genes? <laughs> his little sister does reveal herself. Just how much will be revealed and what under what circumstances? Uh, boys. Oh, no. So, um, can I ask? Uh, I'd like to be in the next GAP for this. <laughs> Can he take my place for that episode? Because I think I'm out. Listen, it actually shows nudity, too, so I'm going to warn you on that. It doesn't Hulu, help, it, Josh. It's, it is available to be watched on both Hulu and Crunchyroll. Oh, God, no. Uh, oh, it's oh, it's available legally. Oh, that means I have to. That means I have 12 to. 12 episodes really in an OVA. On this one, just so I can be there to help you guys out. <sighs> I've this oh, that's too this much. anime is almost I've this watched is old. That's too much. I've rewatched it. Oh. oh my god. The OVA is called Brother, Sister, Lover. Oh, oh no. Okay, listen. Uh, it has a 6.79 it, on, so. on my anime <laughs> list. Matt, can we cancel the podcast? <laughs> no. No. Hey. Oh, be and glad. there's a dub. There is a dub. There is a dub too. Oh god, Sh no. Hey, be glad is you didn't get Absolute Duo. Is it on High duo? Dive? Because it's owned by Sentai. It might be on High Dive. Be glad you didn't get Absolute Duo, guys. Oh, I would have. I would have. Uh, I would have jumped out of there. And yes, it's on High Dive, I believe. With an explanation point at the end. What is the name of this end? fucking show again? Nakaimo, my, my sister's, sister's among, among them? 
Yeah. Jesus Christ. Never. And he doesn't want to date his sister. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know which one his sister is. Listen, okay, how do, how do you spell like this? Seven, I gave it a 7 out of 10. It was decent. How do you spell if you this? If you turn your brains off, you'll be fine. Here's the thing. His sister <laughs> did the fuck away from his sister. Hey, the guy's actually pretty good and tries to stay away with them since he actually, you know, doesn't want to be a fuckboy. Oh, it's only a half-sister. Okay. <laughs> Wait, there's more than one of these? <laughs> no, no, the, the sister's a half-sister. No, I mean there's more than one of s these series. Uh... Uh, no. There's no Nakaimo, my sister is among them, and then there's Nakaimo, my there's little the sister is among them. Uh, no, my little sister among them is not that. No, this, it's Nakaimo. Is it just, is it the same one? Yeah. No. Yeah. Wait, is it if that's the case, it's on Crunchyroll and High Dive. It's oh, on High Dive, no. too. Alright, so, officially, next week, the anime is Nakaimo, or the next podcast, the anime is Nakaimo. I hate you, I hate you so them. much. So, um, I'll be there for you guys. I hate you so much. I disown you as my son. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, um, and with that, uh, I think it's time we wrap up. Yep. Um, yep. I am, yeah, you I, think? I am your host, uh, Matt, a.k.a. Legion Rex. With me, I have my my uh, wonderful co-host, Shane, a.k.a. The Bearded One. Hey, hey. I wish I was dead. Uh, just, we also have our two special guests. Spencer. I hate you, I hate you. I hate you. And Josh. Yeah, I can't wait to fucking Crash. Get you guys tomorrow yep. or next week. We can, we can finally say we can finally uh, was, say that we've gotten uh, trash on the randomizer, and it's genre, not and a good day. I am very happy. Uh, I know it's with Edgy Harem. <laughs> and this is Clash he went this edgy, year. and then I thought, well, it's gonna end up trash anyway. Did you so this, yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. I'm talking, I'm talking, uh, Shade. I don't know what I expected, but I want to die. All right. Bye. So, um, and with that, I think it's time we wrap up, and uh, we'll see you guys next time. Gianna. Uh. Thank you for listening to The Gap. If you like what you've seen, you can subscribe to The Gap Podcast YouTube channel to get the latest podcasts as they go live. Be sure to like and comment and let us know what you guys think of the show. Thank you very much for tuning in, and we'll see you next week. Oh, 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 oh,